Today, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Minnesota Vikings. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's cold outside. It's perfect in here. These two teams are not perfect because actually the Eagles and the Vikings, well, neither team is going to the playoffs. This is just week number 16, but there's been a lot of action around Philadelphia. Marion Swampbox Campbell, who is watching back in his New Jersey home, can throw another log on the fire today, Swamp Fox. The players have said, win this one for the Swamp Fox. That's the way the Eagles feel. I'm Tom Brookshire, along with me, the former Eagle coach, Dick Vermeil. Dick, uh, how much emotion is packed into a deal like this? Uh, will that carry the Eagles today and make them a real good football team? Well, Tom, I think more often than not, that kind of motivation is artificial. But in this case, due to the respect that the players have for Marion Campbell, it will be a positive influence on the football team. And, of course, uh, a year ago at this time, uh, Leonard Toes uh, was riding off to, to the Purple Sage of Phoenix. Uh, the last game, uh, it's been sort of a, the new owner took over in April, Mr. Brayman. Uh, he replaced Marion Campbell with Fred Bruni, his great loyal assistant, uh, who will have the team for at least this one game. What kind of an offense do you think, or what kind of a team is Mr. Brayman planning to have, do you think? Well, in your halftime interview, which your fans will see later, he said he wanted a big play offense. You know, when I traveled around the league, I'm in a different practice field every Friday, Tom, during the season. And big play offenses are made up of big play football players, like the Mike Quicks and the Dan Marinos. And I think when the Philadelphia Eagles have enough of those kind of players, they also will be a big play offensive team. All right, Nick, we're going to see a good uh, defensive ball club, that's for sure. The, the Eagles are still second against the pass in the entire league. They shut down the great scoring machine at San Diego and only allowed them 20 points. But the problem is... And maybe this is going to be a grudge game. As Bud Grant, earlier in this month, the Vikings were down 23 to nothing. They came back and scored 28 points in seven minutes, a little over seven minutes. And that's probably the start of the big slide uh, for the Marion Campbell Eagles team. You know, Murray, I don't really believe that. I really believe the new owner came to town and there was only one way that Marion was going to keep his job, and that's put him in the playoffs, and anything else would not be acceptable. Because most owners that invest that kind of money, they want to have the, their most important man be the guy that they bring there. You're yeah. looking, of course, at uh, Bud Grant, who has, uh, he played with the Eagles, went to Canada. He was a young head coach up in Canada, but he was also uh, uh, playing at the same time when he took over, so young coaches do become older sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you, I bet you, I bet you right now that uh, Marion feels 10 days younger <laughs> right now. 263 games for Jan Stenerud. And he was introduced all by himself today by a good man. He is 43 years old. He can still kick it. At the five-yard line is Herman Hunter. Hunter Holt stumbles and still gets to the 30. And if he had kept his feet, might have had a very long return. Here's the offense for the Eagles. Jaworski, Ernest Jackson, who needs... 70 some odd yards to reach a thousand only the third eagle to ever do that if he makes it michael haddix kenny jackson mike quick and john spagnola having a fantastic year at tight end reeves kenny dennard baker and leonard mitchell shotgun Jaworski throwing almost caught almost intercepted on the first play intended for herman hunter here's the minnesota viking defense martin tim newton and millard no huddle, Tom. No huddle offense. Blair Fouts, Howard, and Chris Martin. Here's one of the wrinkles that the Eagles have put in for this game. Overthrowing quick and the flags are down. Fred Bruni, a loyal assistant of Marion Campbell's for 19 seasons, is running the Eagles for this particular day. I bet you that's a different feeling for Freddie down there because Marion always called the defenses and listened to the suggestions made by Fred, but it's a different feeling all of a sudden when you have to do it yourself. There he is standing right, the little ball spot on top of the head. That's from coaching <laughs> secondaries. Holding number 74 <laughs> offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Especially coaching some of the young kids that we had in 1977 and 78 playing that secondary or the, or the real old-timers that were just about finished. The no huddle again, Leonard Mitchell was called for holding. Jaworski filling the air today, and it's almost intercepted, almost caught by Kenny Jackson. Covered by number 39, Carl, Carl Lee. Lee. Here's that secondary. Lee, one of the men that just broke that pass play up. Lee, Teal, Joey Browner, who's going to the Pro Bowl as a special team representative, and John Turner. Enjoyed your broadcast from St. Louis yesterday. I 
Cole is a little bit better, though, you think? Yeah, I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. Of course, it's a lot warmer indoors. You know? <laughs> That's right. In here, perfect 70 degrees. Third down and 20. This time, the Eagles use the huddle. Third and 20. Jaworski. Quick has it and drops the ball at the 36-yard line. Browner was there, but three throws and three incompletions. Mike Horan, the young punter who is really booming the ball. Late in the year, he's become one of the most trusted kickers. He'll be kicking to Darren Nelson. And if you haven't seen this young man perform, stick around. He's a scooter, isn't he? One of the great athletes I've ever seen. Horan drives it and somehow gets it off. There are no flags down there. He got it off. Nelson at his own 29. He can make you miss, Tom. I'd say almost to the 40-yard line. And the Vikings offense will come on the field. Reggie Wilkes was down under that. Here's the offense. Tommy Kramer, Darren Nelson, Ted Brown, Jones, Anthony Carter, who has eight touchdown catches and had two against the Eagles earlier in the month. And Steve Jordan, one of the real good pass-receiving tight ends. Huffman, Boyd, Swilly, Tausch, Tim Irwin, the giant from Tennessee at right tackle. What kind of an offensive club is this, Dick? Well, you know, they, they're efficient offense. They don't score a lot of points, but they don't have to use many plays to get it done, Tom. They're very efficient. Oh, hey, oh. Oh, the toss. Back to Anderson. Anderson gets out to the 47-yard line. Gary Cobb finally made the tackle there, and here's the Eagle defense. And boy, Marion Campbell uh, really built a beauty. Reggie White, Ken Clark, and Greg Brown. You know, I was disappointed, Tom, that Kenny Clark didn't make the Pro Bowl. I thought you know, he was as good or better than anybody we saw play that position during the year, didn't you? Yep, I think a lot of people feel the same way. Here's the secondary. Young Edwards. Herman starting his 135th consecutive game at right corner. That's a lot of gang action out there. Second down and two. Gain of eight. 238. Kramer changed the play. Toss. This time, Brown is smothered by Clark back at the 40-yard line. Boy, Kenny Clark looked like he was going to get the toss. Looked like they slanted him to the strong side toward the wing, Tom, and brought him right into the play. Oh, Kenny Clark. I can remember watching him on college films when we brought him in as a free agent. He was the defensive right tackle in a 30 defense playing for Syracuse. He's bulked up a little bit right now. Instead of lifting weights, he just lifts the weight room. <laughs> oh, <he's so> <laughs> the whole room. Yeah. Is he a man? The last game of the season. He said... Uh, a year ago at this time, uh, everybody was packing their swimming gear, getting ready to go to Arizona if Mr. Toes had decided to move the team. And now they're looking for a new coach. And we have Mr. Brayman's words at halftime, a rather interesting interview. Third down and six. Shotgun for Kramer. Jordan has it and drops it at the 49-yard line. I don't know if I've ever seen that many drop passes in the first offensive series by both teams. Must be the weather in here, huh? <laughs> Bud makes them work out in the cold, you know, unless it's about a foot of snow. They're not used to this warm weather. Vikings have a big bag to practice in, but he won't let them inside that thing until it's about 20 below zero. Cooper's back to accept the punt. Greg Coleman, one of the more accomplished punters in football. He could go to the Pro Bowl any time and not embarrass anybody. He hasn't never had one blocked. It's a low-line driver, Tom. It's a return ball. To the 34-yard line. Cooper brings it back. And now the Eagles have the ball. We have no score, but the fur is flying. Power. 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 263 games. The former skier from Montana State, the great kicker, was the only Viking introduced today.
1.5 yards per game, ranking 21st in the league. And if you're going to win in this league, you better stop the run. Ernest showed up just in time to get into an Eagle uniform early September, and he's been the leading rusher for the Eagles in 12 games this year. Second down and four. Second carry in a row and short of the first down. Pretty good defensive play on that right side by Millard. The Vikings are changing the 30 defense look right at, prior to the snap, Tom, and uh, moving up into an eight-man front. You'll see right here, there's eight men up close to the line of scrimmage playing defense rather than the seven that's normally there in a 30 defense. It's a good defense to throw against. I would imagine they'll start audibly to some passes out against that one-on-one -on -one coverage. The Eagle Orange defense, huh? Yeah. It's going to be short of the first down by about a foot, I believe. Neither team has scored. Jaworski and company came out with no huddle and steamed it up. They didn't get any completions. Now they're beginning to run the football a little bit. And Fred Bruni said, I'm not going to change anything. We're just going to go out and play good defense and try to get enough points to win a game. <laughs> there isn't, I don't think there's any better approach than to first think about playing good defense and then go from there, rally, and get enough points on the board offensively to win. That's the problem. The Eagles have been losing in the second half four consecutive weeks, four losses, and they had a lead going into that fourth quarter and darn near every one of them. Yeah, they've been outscored, uh, Tom, in the last four weeks in the second half, 72 points to 24 points. Is that Jaworski's fault? No, uh -uh. I okay. think sometimes defenses get better and sometimes, you know, things just don't go well as you have played. The I formation, third and a couple of inches. First, first down for the Eagles, Jackson jumping over the left side. You know, he's not a finesse type runner, but he gets, he is a, a good, he has a short, choppy steps, Tom. He can find the daylight and he runs strong. A lot of power in that guy. New England, three to nothing over Cincinnati. Of course, the Patriots must win. Everybody's back to the wall and the playoffs that uh, the system, the wild card system, I think is very exciting. You know what? I think pro football is, has a lot of drama late in the year that some other sports don't have. First and ten, handoff. Jackson got a lot of room. Gets to midfield before Joey Browner hangs on to make the tackle. Cut back nicely on that. He wanted to run to the right. They had it clogged up, and he turned right back and darn near popped it out that left side. There's Browner, the Pro Bowl special teamer that we talked to you about. He's from the great football family, the Browners. He had a big brother that played with Cincinnati and was. Yeah, he uh, Maxwell Ross. Award winner. Yeah, Keith is playing at Tampa. I think he's still there. Hunter is in there now, the good pass receiver. Quick has it and then is dumped, separated from the ball at the 40 by, by Turner. They're on target, not caught. To the left corner of your screen, you'll see the defensive back close nicely on the ball. See, he was watching the quarterback. He closes right now and gets his hand up and deflects the football. Good job of playing pass defense. Offense, Flag. offensive line not setting one second. Penalty yep. decline, third down. Declination of the penalty by the Vikings. The offensive line didn't get set. It's right at midfield now. The ball, in fact, is right in the middle of this artificial surface here and this is a fast track yeah and i tell you the players don't like to play on it it's, it's really a very hard surface they don't like to play the vikings the eagles are like three and nine against this team in fact you didn't beat them to what 80 was the first 1980 time beat yeah we beat them in 1980 for the first time the shotgun formation on third and six the first translation to hunter a lot of running room hunter inside the 20 to the 12 yard line Nice shot right there. He's a 190 pounder and he's got that strange, almost like he's roller skating. He's got that funny uh, way of running. Here we are looking from behind the defense. Now watch the back come out of the left side of your screen. Now he's going to come back underneath. They ran some cross charges up in front. Here he appears. Now he takes a short pass and makes it a big play. And that's what I'm talking about, Tom. Big play offense is made up of big play players yeah, he's an 11th, 11th round draft pick that's some good selection there he's going to be quite a young good player in this league real good find by lynn styles the personnel director ernest jackson is in there now the i formation haddix is the up back the fullback 38 yard reception by hunter 
Jackson bounces to the 10. Tom, down here inside the 20, I can remember one year that Ron Jaworski throwing the ball inside the 20 yard line completed 55% of his passes, but 75% of the completions were touchdowns. He was super inside the 20 yard line. 30 of 39 times, 77%. The Eagle offense. The only problem is they've been doing it early in the games and not late in the game. Second down and eight. Crowd getting into it now. All the tickets were sold and most of the people have shown up. Jaworski. Touchdown. A great leaping pitch by Mike Quick. Nice shot. Nice throw by Ron. He put it right where he had to put it. This guy's a... You know, the remarkable thing about him, he catches a touchdown every seventh catch he makes in his career. That's a pretty good ratio right there. That's a tremendous ratio. A number one draft pick in 82. That's his 10th TD catch. It was a 10-yard strike. Fadden drills through the extra point. And Bruni's on top. It's Philadelphia 7, Minnesota nothing. Now the leading pass receiver in the season, Art Monk finished up yesterday down in St. Louis, and already Quick has added to. Here's the touchdown play. Mike Quick is sitting off to the left side of your screen in the slot formation. He breaks outside, and look how he catches that ball, gets it tucked away nicely, and comes down for the TD. Must arrive, a Davis return man at the 18-yard line. Rhymes out to the 34. You know, Buster Ryan is the second-best kickoff return guy we've seen this year. Ron Brown, of course, of the Rams is unreal. But Buster Ryan has done a great job. When you average 24.6 a return, you're doing a, a real good job. Only problem with him is he ends up back in Oklahoma once in a while. But he gets <laughs> to come to practice and things. <laughs> yeah. But he can run them back. He had a 55-yarder against the Bears. And the Vikings actually played Chicago uh, two tough football games. You're looking at Tommy Kramer, number nine. The rifle out of Rice. First and ten now. Eagles have drawn first blood in the seven nothing. Kramer, he's got time. And open receivers, Darren Nelson at the 40 yard line. Darren Nelson was the number one draft taken in the same year that Marcus Allen was drafted by the Raiders later on. There's been a lot of criticism leveled at Minnesota for doing that, but for an indoor player that can run back punts, kickoffs, catches, and a good rusher. We've seen him have a, he's quite a valuable new player. He may have the same number of yards if he were running for the Oakland offense. Not Oakland, excuse me, Los Angeles Raiders offense. Really. Freudian, Freudian slip there. For a guy with a great running back, he's got to have the ball. You've got to give it to him. Remember, we saw him giving the ball against uh, Detroit here, and he had 120 yards rushing. Second down and three. Toss. Anderson. Room to the 46-yard line. The Vikings have been waiting for Anderson to, to show some of that good running ability. Gary Cobb standing up to the left side of your screen is going to get blocked on this play. Number 50, he's moving out. Now he attacks the play. Running back gets a block on him right there. Works him inside out. Gives Anderson room to break up inside. Cobb has got to constrict that a little bit more and meet that blocker a little more physically, Tom. Pretty good trade for the Eagles. Uh, Wilbert Montgomery... Did not play very much with Detroit, and Cobb, of course, uh, moved out and became the starting right linebacker. Has played very steady this year for the Eagles. First and ten. Play action. Kramer down the middle. Jordan holds on to it at the 30-yard line. And Wes Hopkins was the tackler. And usually when Hopkins hits a receiver, they cough the ball up. I'll tell you. Look pass now follow the left side of your screen on the left corner you're going to see this happen the tight end's going right down the middle number 83 now see him compare right there Wes Hopkins is zeroing in he's got the sights on him and does he give him a love tap nobody hits him in the secondary any better than Wes Hopkins well Jordan will attest to that Jordan of course is another one of those Ivy Leaguers making it big he's from Brown University a 23 yard reception Kramer quick throw outside and over Carter He's belted out of bounds anyway by Roynell Young. Other scores around on this last day of this regular season. Miami on top of Buffalo. Of course, a win would give the Dolphins that eastern division of the AFC, which is wild. Right. 
Cincinnati, New England tied. New England must win that. Keep the wild card shot there. The Jets, 3-0 over Cleveland. And as we've just told you, that AFC East is not over with yet. The Bears in Detroit. Of course, Denver has won their last game and are waiting for one of those teams to lose, either the Jets or the Patriots, and then the Broncos will be in the playoffs again. Second down and 10. Jordan has it in the seam and gets to the 15-yard line. This guy can play a tune. Yes, Rainer he can. can get for, it going. For, for, a civil, for a civil engineer, you know, you'd think that there'd be a smarter way for this guy to make a living than get his helmet knocked off by Wes Hopkins. Huh? Talk about the best receiving tight ends. We got a couple of them here. Christensen with the Raiders, of course. Schuler and Spagnola and Jordan both having fantastic years. Well, the thing about Jordan, he's caught 65 balls now, but he has not caught a touchdown pass. Maybe that's the reason they, they haven't won all their games, huh? Should be getting to him down inside. Sure. That was a 14-yard reception, by the Inside handoff. Darren Nelson. Maybe a couple. You know, Minnesota likes to run a little counter dive down in this territory with Darren Nelson. You know, we've done two of their games, Tom, in both games. No, it was three games. In all three games down in this area, they ran that play effectively. And one time they put Darren Nelson in the, for a touchdown from about 20 yards out with that little counter dive right up inside. Boy, he is quick. Oh, yeah. The clock in the first quarter. Almost six minutes still left, and the Eagles lead 7-0. Touchdown reception by Mike Quick. Carter and Jones of the outside receivers. Second down and six. Good defensive play, and... Nelson barely gets to the line of scrimmage. Briggs was holding on there, and that's big Tim Irwin. The right tackle that fights half his own players and everybody else's. Yeah, I know it. He is a piece of work, <laughs> isn't he? Now, he's going to law school. Can you imagine him getting upset in a courtroom? I want him to he'd be on over, my side. Yeah, he'd go over and punch somebody. But he, in the last practice we saw him, he got in two fights with two different players on the same day. <laughs> he is quite an interesting person from Tennessee, a giant of a man rather sort of quiet really yeah. for a guy that fights everybody now he's settled down and as we've always said thank heavens there's a huddle and throw football there's be a fight on every play third down and eight carter's the motion man and he's going to get the pass tyler has it at the five herm edwards shoved him out of bounds 81's a gazelle too I think the motion is sort of disrupting the defense a little bit. You'll see right to the middle of your screen, Anthony Carter, 81, come out. Now he plants and goes right out to the flat, gets the ball and gets it put away before Herman Edwards can get there and knock it out. But that movement sort of distracts the defense. And you, you do you use movement, Tom, to distract the defense, to disguise your intention, and sometimes disrupt them, cause them to make a mistake. It worked. Ten yards, a gain on that, and now it's first and goal from about the four-and-a-half-yard line. Brown and Anderson, both of the running backs are in. And the Eagles are going to pull down. I wonder what defense Swamp Fox is calling right now, sitting in that front room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you the the outside, scores. There are no flags now. And the crowd becomes animated. This place can be deafening. It can be so loud, but it's been very quiet so far in this ballgame. You're going to see a real nice block by the fullback number uh, 24, Teddy Brown. On the outside, excuse me, it's Jordan, 83, gets a cut down right there. He went for the knees, put Wes Hopkins down on the ground, and here he comes, Alfred Anderson, number 46, to take it in for the touchdown. Get that shoulder down, Alfred. Yeah, he did. The ageless one, Stenerud, makes it good. And we have a tied ball game. And keep in mind... Out, you yeah, know? If you can come that. up here and play well, you can play forever. He has a long-term contract. Huh? <laughs> That's right. Second down and one. Nelson gets the first down. New England 10 to 3 over Cincinnati now. Atlanta 3, New Orleans nothing. Ooh. Wow. 7 Kansas to 3, City. Kansas City over San Diego. Coriel, we understand, was assured of a job again, but he probably should win that game to make sure. Green Bay 7-3 over Tampa Bay. 
Hey, wouldn't it be something if Swamp Fox coordinated a defense for Don Coryell? Huh? Would that be something? The thing the Eagles have to worry about is make sure that Marion doesn't stay in the <laughs> NFC East. They have to do it twice against his defense. Throw another log on, Swamp Fox. Third down at just inches. He didn't get the first. By air. Brown gets it this time. They say there's a turnover here. The Eagles are acting like they got the football. I'll tell you, it, it's. I'd, I'd like to be in one of those huddles down there in the field just to see what's going on. You know, I, not physically, but at least know how the digging and scratching goes down yeah, there to get that ball and steal it from somebody. I don't think you want to know what's going yeah. on down there. <laughs> I've had players come out many times and say, Coach, I had that ball. I'm down on the ground, and some guy reached in under my belly and pulled it out. And they gave it to him. Said, what the heck do you let him do that for, you clown? You know, for crimey's sake. <laughs> You saw Bruni over talking to Spagnola. They're still trying to separate the group here. I got it. No, you got it. No, it's mine. No, it's yours. <laughs> Who was under there? Was that Irwin down there fighting again? Reggie White came out with the football. The silence is deafening, isn't it? <laughs> here it comes. Here we go. Take a look at the tailback here. Going to get the ball deep. Going straight in there. He's got the shoulders low. It must have come out right underneath his belly. Yeah, it came out right to the right of him. See it bouncing on the ground right there? Right to the center of the screen. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Even deeper. Getting a fumble in return. Jaworski going for quick. Oh, oh he might have gone the length of the field. Quick just looked at the safety man. Browner coming over and didn't catch the football. Well, that was a good throw. They had him double covered, and Ron got the ball in the seam in between the safety and in between between the corner that rolled up, but he didn't hang on to it. Now, watch Jaworski. This is the difference between, you know, uh, winning and losing right here, coming up on us. Look at Jaworski. <laughs> My God. Mike Quick doesn't drop many, but that's no. probably one of the best passes he's, he's dropped because he might have gone 90 some odd yards. Yeah. I believe he was clearing. He did that against the land on a snap, right, Tom? Right. Six, but second down and seven. Make that second and ten. Jaworski is two of seven. Mike Quick has dropped. Ernest Jackson hit as he took the handoff by Doug Martin. This how, Doug Martin's a great player. How many of these players good. are playing for bonuses and all now? Oh, I don't know. You think you know, so? I don't know. It's all, each squad, each organization is different in regard to writing incentive bonuses into contracts. It's a philosophy that's controlled most of the time by the general manager. The average pay, the average player in the NFL is taking in about two hundred thousand dollars a year i understand now so they are well paid and of course they're great athletes and great players third down and ten jaworski's in the shotgun going from the end zone kenny jackson makes a diving reception at the 31. willie teal couldn't keep uh, the penn stater from a nice deep out pattern we used to call that a five route he ran that nicely, beat the single coverage, and Ron put the ball right where he had to put it. Why has he only caught uh, the small number of, of passes that he has this year, the number one draft? 30, that's his 36. 37th catch. Uh, uh, many times it's because, number one, you have Mike Quick on the other side, mm -hmm. and he's your first off. First down and 10. Good reception by Kenny Jackson, 23 yarder. The eye, the play action to Quick. He stares down the DVs and gets to the 38 yard line. That fumbles it, but I believe he was already down. Carl Lee made the first contact on defense. You know what I liked about the Eagles' attitude, and I'm sure the Vikings are that way too, but when things were going bad, instead of hiding, they would show up at all the functions. Yeah. They'd show up at the Baker's Club or whatever it was and, you know, be seen and accepted the people second guessing them but they didn't hide at home and then just come out on sunday and take the paycheck they're, they're very much into the community in philadelphia second down and three jackson gets to the 40 yard line doug martin again boy he's active out there tommy closing seconds of the first quarter we've got a 7-7 seven, seven tie you know you were talking about the kind of squad this is marion campbell told me he says dick this is very much like our 77 team fight like mad play hard every week but come up a little bit short and you know what happened the next year after that we were in the playoffs 
but you go through that maturity process, you know, and maturing, and all of a sudden, boom, you're in there, as long as you maintain that same intense intensity level week in and week out. Constantly trying to improve, huh? Yep. A good young squad. Both of these squads are pretty young. The Eagles are the second youngest in all of football. Third down and two. Jackson. I think he got it. Looks like he got a first down. The Eagles have a record of six wins and nine losses. At one time they were six and five, and they've dropped four in a row. By every conceivable way, too. Yeah. That's the end of the first quarter. It's a 7-7 tie. The Eagles aren't the only franchise that's in a state of constant flux. Uh, the Vikings, Grant left after an 8-8 eight eight season, 83, and a fellow named Les Speckle took over here, and uh, they almost had uh, a mutiny among the players and everybody else. And Bud decided to come back, and he's going to try to get it even for the year. It's been quite a good year for the Vikings, hasn't it? They were really strong. Remember, we did that game against the Rams early in the year, and uh, they actually should have beaten the Rams that day. They gamble on the last play of the game going for a touchdown and, and lost it. Jaworski, the first play of the second quarter, dumps it, trying for Ernest Jackson. Little slip screen to the right side. That's about the first pass that Ron hasn't hit the hands of the receiver with. He had to throw it over the top of Matt Blair, number 59, the veteran outside linebacker, and I think that's why the ball sailed over the top of the receiver. 12, 12 seasons for Ron Jaworski, drafted by the Rams out of Youngstown State. You know, I saw Ron Jaworski throw the first pass he ever threw in a pro football game in the preseason. He seven step drop and didn't stop. He just kept right. He got about 18 <laughs> yards back before he planted his back foot to throw. That's the honest truth. He didn't know where he was going. With the Rams, huh? Yeah. yeah. In those days, he was sort of a mad bomber. He threw the ball hard and often. Second down and 10. Jackson straight over the 45-yard line, covering that ball up. He doesn't fumble very much. He had a fumble a couple of weeks ago, and it was the first one he had had in over 200 carries. Well, he has 257 carries coming into this ball game with a long run of 51 yards for a touchdown. He has been a very good acquisition. They needed him without Wilbert Montgomery, and they went out and got him. He had a 51-yard TD run against St. Louis. He, he actually rushed for 162 yards against St. Louis. He's got 26 yards today. And this is a third down and six. Jaworski is four of 10, 78 yards. Like they may have taken too much time getting it off, huh? It would be a third, third and 10 now. Boy, there's a big difference between third and five and third and 10. That third and five. Game. Offense, still third down. That third and five, you can dump it off, and maybe that running back or somebody or, or delay coming on eight, you can get it. But third and ten, it's a little tougher. I don't know what the difference are statistically, but it's, I would imagine it's that a great difference. Let's see what kind of a rush they could come with. They got a down four, four down line, but let's see if they bring the backers on third down and 11, call it. The flags are down back there as Millard came through and... May have roughed the quarterback. Millard has 10 sacks, you, so you know he knows where the quarterback is. He's sort of a character, that guy, isn't he? One of the local writers gave Millard the, the uh, Rambo Award. Yeah. A fellow named Kurt Brown. Holding, number 73, offense, friendly decline, fourth down. Offensive holding. I'll tell you the story about Millard the next time we get a chance to take a look at him because it's only emphatic if you can see him. Ran into punt. Isn't he uh, the guy that told us that uh, an offensive lineman was any kind of an athlete to be playing defense? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's, he's got a million quotes. Anthony Carter back to run this punt back by Haran. He fumbled the first half. He gets this one out of there. It's not a good punt. Heading for the sidelines and bouncing out at the 23-yard line. So the Vikings have the ball, but nobody has a lead. It's a 7-7 tie. Fred Bruni, in place of his old buddy, the Swamp Fox. Fred is the head coach for this game. Former Ohio State All-American. He played with San Francisco and Pittsburgh and back in the days when I was playing with the Eagles. You know, I've coached for 23 years, Tom, and I've never coached with anybody I was more fond of than, than that guy. What a heck of a man. He's a very loyal person. He was, he was with the Eagles under Joe Harry for a while and Jerry Wallman was the owner. And 
and he came back when you got the swamp box to come and be your defensive coordinator. Anderson taking the pitch out. The flags are down. The Eagles got the first touchdown, a 10-yard pass to Quick from Jaworski, and the Vikings answered that with a short run by Anderson for a touchdown, and it's 7-7. Good defense over on that side. They, they wouldn't allow him to turn up, and they forced him to keep going toward that sideline and use and lose yards. Now watch Greg Brown, 98, right in the middle of your screen, defensive right end. There he headbutts right there on Tim Irwin, number 72, no, Dave Huffman, rather, and comes inside out on the play. Number 72 is David Huffman, the offensive left tackle. Good play by Greg Brown. And a loss of about two yards. So it'll bring up a second down and 12. Greg Brown, we signed for about, I think, $1,500. He came in that day. He weighed 227 pounds, and we just really signed him for a camp player. Because you need some guys to rush the quarterback, and he ended up being the find of the year. Yeah, now he's making about $400,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Found some money, too. <laughs> Times have changed. Second down and 12. Kramer, the quarterback, is going to screen to the left side. The Eagles have a thread. Kramer has to dump it and still gets it to Jay and is tied in. He stopped at the 27 or 28 yard line. There is a flag down. Called on Reggie Wilkes for roughing the passer. But remember, the passer was dancing around in the pocket. Yeah. I think Reggie read it as a scramble. Personal foul call. Reggie's not that kind of player to do it intentionally, you know. In the end zone shot now, left of your screen, number 51, outside linebacker, Reggie Wilkes, being pass protected, comes back up inside. Reggie White flushes him, here he comes now, the quarterback throws the ball, and Reggie hits him after, yeah, they're gonna call that. What, if you're on the sidelines, what would you be yelling right now at the officials? I can't tell you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family broadcast, you're right. First and 10, for whatever reasons, out to the 42 yard line. Roughing the passer call. Everybody's out. Kramer has receivers everywhere. Jordan has it inside the 45 to the Eagle 42. The defensive players put some extra tape on their shoes, and they have a message for the Swamp Fox. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. And his, old, and his old number when he was wearing the Eagles number 78. He has tremendous credibility with his defensive players or the whole squad. And I'll tell you something. You have to earn credibility. They don't give it away. First and 10. 12-11 left in this first half. Final game for both ball clubs. A 15-yard advance for Jordan. As Carter taking the slip screen to the right side, gets to the 40 and steps out wisely. You know, the Minnesota offense, they do a lot of different things with their offense. A lot of gimmick stuff, little screens, reverses, bootleg throwbacks. I don't know what they don't have. The Statue of Liberty, this could be the team with this year, remember? That's yeah. right. He'll, he'll use all of it. Yeah. He used to drive people crazy when he when he'd bring them up to Metropolitan Stadium outdoors. <laughs> yeah. And he had his players running around in short sleeve shirts when it was about 10 below zero, you know? I think Bud's team was the first team I ever saw take a tight end and block down on the ground, lay on his stomach count to about three, then get up and throw him a one-yard pass and he runs 20 yards. <laughs> Great offense, right? Yeah. Second down and eight. A 7 7 tie. Kramer flushed him with Sack back at the 47 yard line by Gary Cobb. Sort of a late blitz by number 50. The Jets 10 to 7. Cleveland's playing everybody tough now. Fine defensive football team. Miami, 7-0 over Buffalo. That was supposed to be a laugher, but none of them are anymore. Yeah. New England needing this one badly. They lead Cincinnati 10-3, but that Bengals, they have a lot of talent on that squad. Kansas City, 14-3 over San Diego. Sammy White, veteran receiver, is in. And Jones. Kramer on third and 14. Going for the outmaneuver in and out of Carter's hands, and he was covered by Ronell Young closely. I like this quarterback, Kramer. He, he, there isn't anything he can't do or won't do to win a football game. You know, he scrambles. Remember the one game we saw him throw one <laughs> underhand? He just right off the hip like a second baseman on a double play, you know? Boom, he gets it to the guy. He, he is a wheeler and dealer. He can drive you crazy. Coleman is into get his second putt off. Cooper yep. is back to receive it. This guy's a good passer, too. You always have to be aware that he can throw the football. Yeah, he's quite an athlete. 
He'll be kicking from his own 40. Cooper's back on the Eagle 10. Almost blocked by Wes Hopkins, but Coleman got it off. A 21-yard line, and it went out of bounds, and the Vikings are lucky that Hopkins didn't come up with that. It's still 7-7. Seven, seven. Encircled to the left of your screen is Wes Hopkins, the all-pro safety, making the Pro Bowl for the first time, coming after a punt. He does everything full bore. Has earned tremendous oh. respect in the National Football League. That ball just about had it right there. An SMU Mustang. Yep. Number two draft. Certainly one of the best secondary men in all of football. He's the hardest hitter I've ever seen. First and ten, Tracy Jaworski. On the 21. Oh, barely gets to the 20 yard line. Good defense by the Vikings. Good defense. That's 36 Power O, the name of that play. Fullback did a pretty good job on the linebacker. 36 Power O, I like that. Follow the linebacker standing up to the left of your screen, number 50, Dennis Folks. Watch him play this, moving inside out, working toward the plate. There he is, he turns it back in, gets some help from the inside. Good play by the strong side linebacker. The young tight end, Dave Little, is in. Spagnola is out. Second down and 10. Jackson and Quick to the top of your screen. Jaworski going to the inside receiver, Jackson. Has the first down and out to the 38-yard line. Don't forget, today is doubleheader day on CBS, and the second game is one that you really don't want to miss, the Cowboys and the 49ers. And as you know, Dallas has already won the division, but the 49ers, they can stay alive in that wild card hunt by beating Dallas, and that's in San Francisco. You know, if they can get into the playoffs, they might be the only NFC team capable of beating Chicago. Yeah, I'd like to see them play Chicago. 17-yard reception by Kenny Jackson. Jaworski's got time. Quick makes the diving catch at the 46-yard line. Great throw because he was well covered. He had to put it low into the outside, and he got it there. Carl Lee was covering him closely. You can see Jaworski gets this off just in time. There's heat coming around to the outside. The ball's going to the left of your screen. Now see that? Low and outside, it drew the receiver away from the defender. He gets it tucked away. Nice catch, Mr. Quick. First nice throw, Mr. Jaworski. <laughs> <laughs> A 16-yard play. Second down and 10. Here's that free place change. Here's the reverse handoff, and Jackson has to keep it himself. And now draws a tremendous crowd at the 46-yard line. Folks was first. He didn't get the handoff on the reverse. I wonder if it would have wonder if it would have worked. There must have been a lot of people uh, on this side of the field. All right, watch the quarterback now as he reverse pivots. He hands the ball to Jackson. Jackson loses right there, and it's up over his shoulder. Look at it. And he was supposed to hand it off right there to Mike Quick. <laughs> Mike said, I'm glad I didn't get that ball. <laughs> That's right. Don't give it to me late. Don't give it to me late. Folks puts him down, number 50. Second down and 15. 9.07 left. Before halftime. Folks have moved around this league a little bit. We've got a young team up here. It's going to be a really a good squad. Second and long. Jaworski, wide open. Is Dave Little. Big tight end gets it inside the 25. They went double zone that time, Tom, and he, he got down the middle of that double zone. And that kind of throw is Jaworski's best throw. Now you're going to see, see the defensive back standing on the 40. There's going to be too deep back there. Now, in the middle of your screen, you see Little working down in between the zone, in between the two safeties. He catches it, and then they come over and get him lunch. Pow. A 28-yarder. That's from, just only his fourth catch. Tom. From Middle Tennessee. Yeah, he scored a touchdown uh, last week, just falling on a fumble in the end zone. He's a big kid, 232 pounds. Where's Middle Tennessee? I've got to look that one up. First down and 10. Eagles got a little thing going here. handoff goes to Jackson he gets outside and is hit hard at the 21 yard line by Brown it was Fouts I believe not uh, Browner the upright linebacker to the left of your screen standing right on the 20 yard line Dennis Folks number 50 reads the action he starts flowing back from the backside he keeps working toward now he'll reappear right to the left of your screen now he's going to come in and give him a nice drill right there good defense again by dennis folks browner was down the, the low hitter and fouts 
Hit him high. Jackson has 23 yards on 12 tough carries. Second down and eight. Great catch inside the five. Now it's fumbled by Kenny, but that putter, they gave it to him. They're going to call it a catch and no fumble. They came after Jaworski with a pressure dog, maybe even a safety blitz, Tom. I didn't see if it was a safety, and he got it off quick enough to, to get it down the field. Herman Hunter made some diving grab. Looks like he might have been throwing it to the crossing receiver right there. It went over his head, and right there, Hunter comes up with the ball. He's got it. Actually, he never had control of the football. They call it uh, incomplete, so it brings up a third down and eight. Again, Jaworski had it on the hand. Here comes the noise, Tom. They held a game up seven minutes earlier in the year. This reminds me of a Miami in a Monday night game in 1981. Same quarterback. Yeah, same quarterback. We did it about eight times, nine times before he finally got the snap off. And I told him not to, but he, he just ran out of patience and we threw an interception. Ended up getting beat. At that time, I think it was tied up. Shula's team beat you 13 to 10, I believe, that night. Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. We always remember those, don't we? Yeah, those are hurt. They hurt. Yeah, I know it. There's Bud Grant. Now, a lot of people have always said, yeah, he's lost four Super Bowls. But you know, they've only played 19, and he's been in four of them. Yeah. You know, you got to be a pretty good team to, to, get, to get to the finals, right? Right, right. He put the deer feeder out in back of the <laughs> training facility, and the deer started coming back to feed. Merry Christmas, everyone. Jaworski gets it off. Touchdown to Quick. Wide open, right down the middle. And full throttle. They must have blown that coverage. And they just turned him loose down the hole. Unless they went double zone again, Tom. Nice throw, Jaworski. That's the kind of pass he throws the best. Straight away from him, either coming off play action or in a pass like this. Here's Ron. Now, to the left of your screen, Mike Quick is going to appear. And there's no one in the hole. See, that just linebackers up there. No one was covering man-to-man, -man, evidently a two-deep zone. The fourth catch for Quick, his second touchdown, that one a 21-yarder. And, of course, he's going to the Pro Bowl. He's a starter. McFadden's extra point. And the Eagles take the lead. Good-looking pass play. It's 14-7. to Mike Quick, the bachelor from Philadelphia, well-dressed. Entrepreneur type, he owns some Arabian horses. I'd like to sell him to your mind, but he's quite a player. He is going to go to the Pro Bowl for the second year. He deserves the Buster Ryan to the 10. Ryan's to the 30, and he's stacked up. Christmas Day on CBS Sports begins with the Blue Gray All Star Football Classic. Some of the nation's top seniors will be there. Navy's Napoleon McCollum, he's a great running back. Notre Dame's Alan Pinkett. Then the NBA returns as Larry Bird, Walton, and the Celtics take on Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks. Both Christmas Day right here on CBS Sports. They just signed a new uh, NBA contract for four years. Didn't CBS do that? Yeah. yeah. It's good for CBS. You know, the NBA started this year with 34 players seven feet or taller. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I can. I'm waiting for a couple of receivers to come in this league that are seven feet tall. You need a ladder to be able to put their helmets on. First and ten. Kramer four-yard line by Reggie Wilkes. Did you see Kramer look to a right and get to just sort of flash, look at that guy, and I bet he just go, oh my God, here he comes, no one's blocking him. It's here like comes Reggie Wilkes, left side of your screen, see him working on a tight end, now he's going to chuck him right there, now he's coming, he's zeroed in, now watch the quarterback, look. <laughs> said, uh oh wham, <laughs> down he goes, good job, Reggie Wilkes. <laughs> Second down and 15. That's his first sack of the year. He had six career sacks, but I think that's the first sack this year. He and Kramer get to know each other on an intimate basis today. They've got him for unsportsmanlike. They're hitting him late once. Kramer loading it up and it's intercepted by number 52. That's Kramer still on his feet to the seven-yard line. The evil linebacker has the interception. evidently lost the buzz system or lost the definition of where the linebackers were dropping. I think that's Kranich's first interception in his career. I don't believe nice Kramer play. ever saw him at all, do you? No. 
This guy's a gutty guy. Look at him running. Look at that linebacker. There's that end zone. He says, <laughs> Look, I get a Baldwin on his back. <laughs> Rich Pranick, his first interception this season. He's made about three good tackles, and Kramer has most quarterbacks in all areas. When they throw an interception, they get booed a little bit. First and goal from the sixth. Haddocks down to about the two and a half yard line. 11 plunge. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. The Eagles smarting from the, they had a 23 to nothing lead on this team. And all the old 60 Eagles, we were back for the reunion that day and all, and then in seven and a half minutes, it all went south and they gave up 28 points. And how the team recovered from that, or if they did, is up for debate, I guess. They're not gonna let this one get away, at least they don't think so. Second goal from the two. Jackson in for the touchdown. Notice how he covers that ball up. So he, the fumble is simply taken out of the lineup. <laughs> you start turning that ball over, it's really important for the coach to remind him that he's fooling around with his contract fumbling <laughs> that football. <you> know? <laughs> Not only your contract, but his. Yeah, right? there. Jackson, number 41, just straight eye lead play. He finds a little cutback gap and gets it in. Good job. McFadden has a chance now to put the Eagles up 21 to 7. He missed he missed two field goals out in San Diego on natural grass. He says he likes it indoors. Eagles do too. We'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday and yeah, a Merry Christmas and, a great and all new year this time. And everything. You bet. Your cold's okay? Yeah, I'm hanging on. We'll do a little wave job like that. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> That's what they do on the other Of course they do. A lot of fun, though. This is the last game of the regular season, and the teams still have to show up and play and still get injuries, that still get hit hard, have interceptions, still have feelings and families. And it's a great way to make a living, but it's tough. Nothing to it, Tom. It's like stealing for a living, coaching in the NFL. <laughs> Great secure sure. position, yeah. McFadden approaching the ball at the 35. This is one of his weaknesses, is the kickoff. This one goes to the three. Ryan takes it to the three. Good coverage. Short of the 20-yard line. He's drilled out of bounds. The teams that have already qualified for the playoffs, the Bears, the Los Angeles Rams, Dallas, and of course the Giants. Washington is waiting for San Francisco to lose later on today to Dallas. We don't think that'll happen, but a lot of stranger things, I guess, have happened. But that's the second part of today's CBS doubleheader. Cowboys and 49ers. You hear, did you hear those boos? Could you imagine if Bet Stadium was enclosed? <laughs> How that would sound there, huh? <laughs> they never booed you there. I never heard oh, of hey, you. Hey, don't kid me, this is what you are. Philadelphia has 189 yards. Minnesota has 90. This is Darren Nelson taking the toss. Well, he's going to lose yardage as Cobb knocks him out of bounds at the 16. Gary Cobb played that play as well as you can play it as an outside linebacker. Top of the screen, number 50, being blocked by 83, Steve Jordan. Now watch him work inside out. He has control of the linebacker. He comes off the block. Safety comes up there. Here comes the linebacker inside out. Good defensive play. And a lot of uh, pursuit. They had some help there in case Nelson somehow wiggled out. Second down and 13. A loss of three. Good play by Cobb. He was the Lions defensive captain for three years. Yep, he wore the star. Second down and 13. And Wilkes gets his second sack back at the 11-yard line. You know, that's funny. Now, I might be wrong, but I don't have a sack registered for Reggie Wilkes all year, and he has two today, plus a hurry. He's the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. To the left of your screen, number 51, Reggie Wilk coming in on a dog. No one picks him up. He might, he better make the play. No one blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally he's the rusher as a strong zone is played, Tom, in a 30 defense. He will come after chucking the tight end real good, and he gets there late. Therefore, it doesn't get the sack very often. But that time, it was a, it was a gimme. A sack is like a T-bone steak yeah. in front of a linebacker, right? Third down, 17 now. He goes up 21 to seven and trying to put more pressure on. Sidearm throw, short of number 85, but Sammy White. The 
You think these people like football up here? <laughs> <laughs> Over 60,000 showed up today. And it's being televised locally at the same time. Kramer is 8 of 13 now. 86 yards and one interception. Here's Coleman kicking from about the two-yard line. Cooper at the Eagle 40. Good run back to the Minnesota 46 and bodies are flying. Cooper has a 56-yarder to his credit, so you know he's uh, one of these days going to take one the distance. There's only been seven punt returns, four touchdowns this year, Tom, in 1,067 attempts. Can you believe that? That's amazing. And you've got everybody spread out, but yeah. the, you know, the special teams coaches are so good now. There they are, and they spend a lot more time in the special teams than they used to. Number 99, kicking team, penalty decline, first and ten. Penalty declined by the Eagles because of the good run back by Cooper. You know, Tom, when you've had a, a season that, that, that didn't meet expectations, if you can win the last game of the year, it sends everybody home with a smile on their face. I can remember struggling to win the fourth one. The fourth game, that was the last game of the year. Ron Jaworski said yesterday the pass block has improved so much. He said this is one of the best pass-protecting teams now that he's ever played with. He said yeah. that the offensive line has really improved. And it's a young offensive line with the two tackles. Now, the two guards are the same people who played there. Steve Kenny, the left guard, and Ron... Ron Baker, the right guard. Because Ken Reeves has really been the find of the draft. The left tackle, number 66. He has really been the outstanding pick. Flags are down. There was a slight altercation. It looked like Matt Blair and Ernest Jackson maybe got into a little scuffle. Let's see what the call is by the official there. It's Gordon McCarter. This is a foul. This is Jerry Ruffis, number 96 on the defense. 96. First down. That's Tim Newton. You know, he's built. They call him Fig. I know. <laughs> Where is it going here? 96 right there. You see 96 in the middle of your screen? He's sitting on him right there. You know, he weighs 300 pounds. That's the reason to penalize him. <laughs> First down and 10. Now the ball is on the 29 yard line. Back to Hunter. Hunter throwing the option pass. Overthrowing Jackson, who was wide open in the end zone. Hunter just threw airmail right over the receiver, and he was wide open. Look at the smile on Jaworski's face. He had one pass completion for a <laughs> touchdown early in the year. It was a 28-yard touchdown pass on it. Now he's only a 50% passer, Tom. Yeah, the other fire that guy. The old adrenaline is really pumping. He just airmailed it right up against the wall. You notice that Spagnola isn't playing consistently through the ball game. He has a bad ankle. This is such a, a carpet that you've got a slight injury down there. It must be brutal. So positive. Second down and 10. Eagles lead 21 to 7. Comes the blitz. In the grass by Folks, number 50. He tipped on right up there, didn't he? See, they covered the three offensive linemen, the center and two guards inside. And Fouts, number 50. See him working his way up in there? No one picked him up because both guards were covered, as was the center, and only a back would be in position to pick him up unless they call a gap. You got it? All right. I, I now we go from there. Tell you, number seven, <laughs> as soon as he got the snap, Fouts got him. Yeah. Kenny Iman's done an awful good job with this offensive line. When you stop and think where they, how they started out in the New York Giants and Oakland. Eight sacks the Giants got in that 21 to nothing shutout. Third down and 17, facing Jaworski, who was treated rudely. And for the time, under four minutes left. Shotgun. Number 80 has it at the 16-yard line, Keith Baker. And it's a good thing he turned around because the ball was well on target. Might have been a concussion if he had, he had to put him out. That, that's why Jaworski is called the rifle. Here he is in the shotgun. He's dropping back. Now he's looking straight down to hold the safety in the middle. Now he lets it fly. Now as you look to the right, you see the receiver didn't turn until the ball was about 10 yards away from him. Good timing. Well-coached offensive play. Good-looking catch and a good throw for 20 yards. Going well, to the spot, huh? They're really working on that kind of stuff so much in pro football that many times it's like throw right to a spot. First down and 10. 285! About the 14 and a half yard line. This is Jackson, not 
No room in there to run. Keith Millard, some marine time, and did a nice job, number 75. He's the big kid that uh, we said was so quotable. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the guys gave him the Rambo Award this year and said that he got up on the wrong side of the bed in the delivery room when he was born. <laughs> the guy in the newspaper. <laughs> He's a big kid from Washington State. Played with the USFL, didn't he? Yes, he did. He went to ja it was Jacksonville. Yes, it is Jacksonville. Second down and eight, a gain of two for Ernest Jackson, who's trying to reach 1,000 yards. Only two Eagles have ever done that, Steve Van Buren and Wilbert Montgomery, the Pitcher Mills team. Jaworski gets the blitz and just throws it away. He wasted yeah. that one and gets knocked down anyway. But see, that's an experienced quarterback. He didn't want to take the sack and make the field goal longer if, uh, you know, they don't make it on this next down. Bud Grant's uh, sending in a different defensive uh, group right now, changing that front. Do you remember the time when Jaworski played half a season for you with a cracked finger on his passing hand and he still played? And Amazing, huh? Yeah, Ron always said, Coach, you, you know, if, if I wasn't playing, they might find out they could play without me. <laughs> Fear's a great motivator. Yeah, Third down and eight. Crowd's getting into it. Jaworski with time. At the seven-yard line, Kenny Jackson catches it, fumbles it. They're going to call it a sort of a quick whistle. It looked to me like he fumbled it. I wonder what Coach Grant's thinking right now because, you know, he's been one of the few NFL coaches that has been able to consistently get after the officials. Oh, and he does he, it every Monday oh, morning. Yeah, he gets after them. He calls them a bunch of old fuddy-duddies last week. You'll see right to the right of your screen the receiver coming inside out. There it is. He goes down. It gets the ball. He's got it locked up. Let's see how he... Yeah, the fumble was yeah. caused by the turf. Did you see how wide open quick was in the end zone then? The deep receiver. McFadden trying his field goal. 26-yarder. He's perfect from this distance. And it's good. That makes him six for six, huh? Nine for, uh, it makes him uh, 10 for 11 in this group from that distance. He loves kicking off this carpet, you know? It's, this is like uh, something you'd have in your your game room or something, and it's po positive, and he puts that left foot down right. there. It's, I think, you know, the field goal kickers in the National Football League right now are kicking at a success ratio at about 72.5% success. And I think one of the reasons the percentages are up for field goal kickers through the league is that there's more dome stadiums and more good kicking services. You think the ball probably carries well indoors yeah. too, huh? Scores from other games around the league. New England 20 to 6 over Cincinnati. Getting after. I can't figure out why Cincinnati isn't better. Your favorite such a kicker, good offensive team. Your favorite kicker, Tony Franklin's kicked yeah. one for the sure. Patriots. <laughs> Cleveland trailing the Jets 17 to 10 in the second quarter. Jets have to win that. Chicago 6 to 3 over Detroit. Boy, I tell you, it's done some jobs. Daryl Rogers has done some job with Detroit. He turned that team completely around in one season. Beat Dallas, beat Miami, and beat the 49ers. Miami's winning today, 14 to nothing. Marino with two touchdown passes. He comes out of the dressing room throwing. From the 35, Bags kick is short. That's Ryan's at the 10. Buster Ryan going on his own now. short of the 20 he's collared good disciplined kickoff coverage that time they Very kept the wall under that yeah they kept the wall coming Tom. they didn't break the lanes Gordon McCarter tells us the offsides I guess was against Philadelphia on the kick coverage team this Kramer is really good in their two-minute drill prior to the half time you see he has scored 25 times in his career in the last two minutes of the first half very Off efficient side, at this time. Number 67 on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, free kick. Number 67 on the kicking team. That's Ferry who made the tackle. That helps. Yeah. Jerry Ferry. Cardinal O'Hara High School, Springfield, Pennsylvania. Local guy. He can live at home and play for the Eagles. <laughs> Where'd he go to school? Syracuse? Uh, yeah. Syracuse is right. Springfield, Ohio. Springfield, Pennsylvania, excuse me. It's 24 to 7, two-minute warning. Alan Rice has picked up the swift kick from the 30-yard line by McFadden. 
and gets out to about the 36-yard line. Spagnola's ankle is bothering him, so we won't see him anymore. He's had two great years back-to-back. -back. You know, Tom, the, I, seeing Spagnola standing on there reminds me of the story when we brought him into training camp. He was cut by New England in the final cut, and Carl Peterson wanted to sign him, and I said, I don't like to bring players in in the final cut. I like to keep the guys in the training camp. And he ran a 4 7 40. I said, well, <laughs> you stay. <laughs> the you Yale, become an eagle. Yeah. The Yale leave was pretty quick. He yeah. yeah. missed the whole 83 season with a cervical disc operation, and many people thought he'd never play again. He's just come back beautiful. The ball is spiked by Reggie White. Kramer had it almost taken right off his hand. Reggie's a giant, 285 pounds, six foot five, and without training camp, you can imagine how this guy is going to play with training camp. To the left of your screen being blocked by Tim Irwin, number 76, 91, appearing good power rush, driving him back into the quarterback. Now watch as he cocks his arm. There goes his hands. Oh. He bats it out. Volleyball, no net, but he still counts. Is that a spike or what? A spike. They tell me that Reggie White does one of the great Elvis Presley imitations of all time. Really? He is an entertaining guy that's got a lot of music and... Go with the flow. He's quite an addition to this ball club. He's, he's going to be an all-pro. He's going to entertain a lot of quarterbacks in the next time. <laughs> Singleton, second down and 10. Kramer comes into trouble, gets away from Wilkes, and now is tackled by Kenny Clark. The people are, are booing. I, I don't know if they're booing the blocking or the play that's called. How could they be booing the quarterback who can't even get it loaded up without getting a hit? That makes no difference, Tom. The quarterback has to assume the responsibility for that. You know that. Fourth sack for the Eagles. Ernest Jackson, we're told, has a broken nose, but he still may be back. He is tough. Number 41, sitting in the middle of your screen. Yep. Oh, he comes back in. Third down at 14. Kramer throwing the deep sideline. They're going to call Warnell Young for interference on Carter, but it was a darn good play by the cornerback. He was glued to him. It looked good from here, but we weren't as close as the official. I don't think Roynell likes the call. Mass interference, number 43 defense, first and 10. You can see right there to the left side of your screen, see him reach with the right hand, his left hand's not on him. Uh, I personally believe that's a bad call, Tom. Yeah, he might have made some contact, but he had him covered so well, that really kills you when you've got the good coverage solo on a receiver that's that quick. An 18 yard penalty, however, and it's on the Eagle 49 now, first and 10. Again, remember, Kramer has done a good job before the half, scoring 25 times. Three-man rush. He still has to run out of the pocket. And finds Carter at the 31-yard line. What a throw by Kramer. Almost ran over the line of scrimmage before he threw it. Fans like that one. He's calling timeout. A three-man rush, and the Eagles put pressure on him with only three men. Good heat. You know, that's true many times. See, Reggie Wilkes... Uh, beat him inside and flushed him to the outside. Beat Irwin. There he is coming in the zone. Now watch Hopkins come up and give him one right oh. across the chops. <laughs> he is some hard hitter. Don't forget at halftime, uh, if you people want to hear what the new owner of the Eagles has to say, stick around here with us. Also, the NFL Today group, Brent Musburger and Harry Carson, the great giant linebacker, will be there with all the scores and highlights. And, of course, special part of the legends, the grand old men of the NFL, Charlie Joyner of the Chargers. I thought yes, they were featuring you in that myself, huh? Yeah, I mean, they don't go back that far. And John Riggins. That's all at halftime. And don't forget, we have a little conversation with Norman Brayman, the new owner who flew in from Florida, about the coaching prospects and who he's looking at and talking to, and how much respect Norman Brayman has for Marion Campbell, which is it's nice a funny way to show it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. The bottom line is, I talked to Swamp Fox on Monday, and uh, he knows he can he'll get a lot of offers. He's going to go in the warm weather, coach defense, and have fun, and drink a beer now and then, and fish a little bit, catch some uh, wide mouth bass. You know? <laughs> First and ten. Shotgun. Trainer shot. Fifty-nine seconds. This is going to fall on. The rug and the blues will come up. Sammy White might have been close, but Kramer's calling for interference. Mike Jones got knocked down. Kramer's down there correcting the official. He's a competitor, this guy. 
I really like watching him play. I like him when he's got dirt on him. He, he <laughs> seems to be like that bow-legged type quarterback, yeah. like a like Bobby Billy Lane. Or, yeah, yeah. Kilmer. He looks funny indoors. We came down here undefeated in 1981, having won six straight, and uh, he gave us lunch <laughs> with three-yard passes. <laughs> and threw about 60 of them, right? Oh, God. Second down and 10. Kramer uh, gets away from the rush somehow, and now is tackled at the 35. Great coverage downfield. He couldn't get to the open receiver. The, Nobody was open. The fifth sack by the Eagles. They were really putting on the rush. Greg Brown, I believe, got this one. Watch, everybody's coming now. Four down linemen coming. Here comes Ray Ellis, number 24, off the corner out here. No, that's not 24, that's 21. Excuse me. That's Evan Cooper coming. Now watch how this guy, he stays after it. He moves up inside. He still can't find anybody open. Wes Hopkins was in there, too. They had safety men back there trying to flush the quarterback out. Kramer stepped up, finds Carter at the 16-yard line. 28 seconds, Tom. 27 seconds. Ellis making the stop there. Boy, good movement by the quarterback in that pocket. Well, it's breaking down in a different area, darn near on every play. Carter's beginning to show the speed that when Minnesota traded, they traded the sin line to Miami for the rights to Carter, who had just burned up the USFL, and he didn't do much till, in fact, till the Eagle game in Philadelphia when he got the two long touchdown catches. Now he's beginning to get the uh, motor tuned up. Sometimes to re-emphasize a receiver in your offense, you have to change how you're reading some of your basic patterns to get the ball to him more. Uh -huh. So because coverage is forcing you to go in a different direction and you have to reorganize your read so you get it over to that flanker back. And that happens, that also is true when you're trying to get the ball like to Jackson. Sometimes your reads are putting you over strong side too much and you have to reorganize them if you want to get them back over there to uh, another receiver. It's really but, involved, isn't it, the pass routes now. There's so much reading done and adjustment almost as the throw is being in. There, there, you're right there. But Carter has, you know, he's caught eight touchdowns in 37 receptions. You know, that's a pretty yeah. good ratio. One, one timeout. Minnesota has one timeout left. Don't forget, uh, in the first half, the Eagles have outscored everybody. And in the second half, they've been outscored by everybody. So hang in there. Don't go away. If they blow this lead, I think Swamp Fox will meet him at the airport. <laughs> it's 24 to 7 with 27 seconds left in the first half. Kramer's driving, though. First and 10. Beats the blitz and off the hands of Sammy White. And now the late flags are thrown on Herm Edwards. That's Jack Fetty, isn't it? The pudgy fella. He's yeah. one of your favorite officials. Oh, yeah, I know is. that. Edwards can't believe it. He was not in as good a position as the other official was to make the call. The, the official in position didn't make the call. Number four on the defense. First and ten. Reggie White was in danger of maybe getting a penalty then, defending his right cornerback. Follow the ball right in the middle of your screen as it comes down to the right corner. Now, there he is reaching across there. I guess they call him having his right hand on his hip. That's the only thing I could see. But Jack Petty has never made a mistake. You know that, that official. <laughs> Excuse me, Tom. Herm Edwards, one of the real good cornerbacks in football. First and goal from the five. Minnesota's down by a ton, but they're trying to get back in it. They're going to call Edwards again for interference. They can only penalize a half the distance, so it's only going to be a ten and a half yard penalty. He figured if you're going to call one, I'll do a good one. First and goal on a one yard line. Herman Edwards, the right side of your screen. Anthony Carter coming off on an inside slant. He locks him up right there, beyond the five yards, definitely pass interference. <laughs> he says, I might as well earn one if you're going to call it. <laughs> so, Herm Edwards gets called for strangling yeah. Carter in the end zone. It'll put it on the one-yard line. This, If they score, it'll be the 26th time in his career that he's scored in the two-minute drill prior to the half. Amazing. He does a good job. You called it. Brown and Anderson, both running backs are in. First and goal in the one. Three interference calls in this drive alone. Great defense by Kenny Clark coming underneath. Got him before he got to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. Minnesota only has one timeout left. And they burned it then. They lost yardage on that. You know, for two teams going nowhere, it's been a pretty darn good first half, hasn't it? They've done a good job. They're both battling. 
And this Minnesota team is the kind of team you just don't say you've gotten to beat, you, you got to beat, because they come back in the second half and they can get after you. Their best quarter of football, Minnesota's best quarter is their fourth quarter. They've scored 128 points in the fourth quarter and given up 84, so that's plus 44 points. It's the best quarter they play. And you remember how they opened this season? They beat San Francisco on the first day of the season and shocked everybody. Yeah, and especially the 49ers. 49ers had over 500 <laughs> yards of offense, but they turned it over too many times. And the old turnover factor is just killing football teams. It really, it really has hurt the Eagles. Of the 13 teams, even or better in the turnover ratio, giveaway, takeaway, nine of those teams are winners and four of them are losers. Nine and four, huh? Yeah. And that's just if you're even. Even or better. Don't turn the ball over. Vikings, Vikings only have 11 yards rushing as Bud Grant is a sort of a a man of all seasons. He's decided to throw the football. He'll do what he has to do to win. I tell you, I really respect the guy. Very, I spent a whole day here during the season that time, Tom, and had a lot of time to, uh, to visit with the guy. We're out on the practice field. Some geese fly over and he yells at me and points to the sky. <laughs> he loves the outdoors. Second and goal from the two. Roll out, play action pass. Touchdown. Ninth TD of the season for Ted Brown. Man in motion. Number 83, Steve Jordan, the tight end. Three man pattern. He goes in and picks people. Now you can see two people working to the flat. Coverage blown by the defense. See the linebacker hustle over there. I'm not too sure that that wasn't Anthony Griggs. Anthony Griggs coverage. I'm not sure what they have called. Stenerud in to kick his second extra point of the day. That's good. And as we said, don't go away. We've got 30 minutes more of football. And the Eagles are rather excited in the second half. You know what I'm excited about at halftime is the Minnesota chili beans they serve in those those uh, poly sandwiches. Got a little bit of a fight going down, and the extra point is a great time to get even with somebody you've been <laughs> trying to line up for about five years. <laughs> They're Danny yelling Brown. across the field at one another. That was Irwin again. Number 70, now they got another fight going down on the five-yard line. Coleman is involved in this one. He's the holder. I've never seen a holder get in a fight, have you? <laughs> no. I know I've never seen a punter get in a fight. Swilly's coming off and Big McDonald. Irwin had them all stirred up. He can do it. The great thing about a football fight is that nobody really gets hurt. No, I know. I'll tell you one time in a college ball game, I got hit in the Adams apple. He, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm the quarterback. You know, I couldn't say anything for about 10 minutes. <laughs> have you ever got hit in the Adams apple? Yes, yeah? I know it. Oh, my God. I've hit, I've hit other people in the Adams apple. Have you really? Don't forget, the second game after this next half, which is going to be exciting, the Cowboys and the 49ers. And Dallas has already won the NFC East. San Francisco, with a win, would get that other wild card spot. And as Dick Vermeil has said, Washington would be out, and the 49ers might be the darnest wild card team to get into the playoff in years. Right, you know, the Cowboys have not been consistent in performance through the year. They've been consistent enough to win the division, but they've had some major setbacks, you know, get blown out a couple times. And like without points scored on without the needing this win, I'll be curious to see how they play. There's the lawyer. There's a barrister after my own heart, 285 pounds. Academic All-American in a political science major. <laughs> Won the NCAA postgraduate award for the University of Tennessee Law School. Doesn't he look like a lawyer right yeah, now? Yeah, what huh? a scuffler he is, though. He fights all the time. <laughs> I bet his wife throws him around like nothing. Better runs onside kick. Fallen on by the Eagles. They claim they have the ball. 12 seconds left. And as Dick Vermeil has told you, Kramer can do a lot in 12 seconds. It's a 24-14 game. Good football game. A lot of things have happened. Now, going into the halftime, you have to tell one team has to say, don't forget, we can't let the pressure off. And the other team is say, yeah, but remember how we came back against the yeah, this I know team it, three weeks yeah. ago, four weeks ago? That game has had to leave an impression on both teams. Mike Quick was on the bottom of that pile and came up with the important recovery. Put your people with the best set of hands on the team in there for that onside kick possibility. First and 10 now. 
one snap, and that'll be all she wrote until halftime. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we have not only all the scores, we also have an interview with Norman Brayman, Eagles new owner. Rather revealing. Jaworski going back and throws to Garrity, who drops the ball at the 38-yard line. And he can't believe it. No, he doesn't drop many balls. I saw him play a lot during the preseason, and he caught everything that was close to him. He caught balls he shouldn't catch. Now he drops one. Bruni on the sidelines. He looks like he's aged already being a head coach. You know, it only takes a little while, doesn't it? <laughs> he's a piece of work, that guy. Tremendous father. Great family man, this guy. When Marion Campbell was released of his duties in Atlanta in the 70s, Bruni walked out the door the same day with him yeah. and left. They cleaned out the lockers together, but he said he would run this in Marion Campbell's behalf this last game. Seven seconds left, second down and ten. Watch out, Kenneth McCook, almost intercepted. I thought there was going to be a heck of a collision here. I had, holy method. John Turner made a diving try for the interception. John Turner can intercept them. He has 23 uh, career pass interceptions. You know, he was cut from the actually cut from the Vikings at one time and then brought back this year after going to San Diego. Talk about a cultural shock. How about going from plus 80 degrees to minus 5? Yeah. The third down and 10. Actually, he wasn't cut. He was traded to San Diego. Two seconds left, and the Eagles are not uh, going to the dressing room yet. They're going to load it up another one. As you call him, the rifle is in there. Everybody's out. He's got time. And it's intercepted at the 35. Lee has stopped at the Eagle 32. The last play of the first half. Don't go away. 24 to 14. Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. And by Lowenbrow, brewed in the great beer-drinking countries of the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow. Tom Brookshire and Dick for me back. You hear that tune playing? That's my tie. I've got a little Christmas tie here that plays plays all kinds of Christmas music. Isn't that nice, Dick? <laughs> you, you got a, you've got a lot of things going for you, Butcher. Classy yeah. act, right? Yeah. There's the quarterback, Kramer, who took the team down there with three interference calls and got them back on the board and into the game, 24 to 14. Here are the halftime stats. 178 yards passing for the Eagles. Wow, what a first half run. 212 yards total offense. That's a lot of yards for one half. Turnovers are even, so no one has an edge there. Might recall that the most yardage the Eagles had this year was in that first game that they ended up losing 28 to 23. They had, I think, 440 yards, 443 total yards in that first loss. And as Mr. Brayman said, that was a tough one for him. Keep talking, Tom. I'm eating my chili. Wait. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> That's the best way to get rid of the cold. That chili will get you all straightened up. There's the man that's back where he wants to be on the sidelines. Bud Grant left the team last year. They only won three games under that Marine Sergeant Les Steckel. This guy sort of, he runs what looks like it's a loose ship, but it's not. No, no, he's totally in charge. And I'll tell you, when he speaks, they listen. <laughs> in fact, if he burps, they look up, you know. McFadden kicking off from the 35-yard line. Buster Rodden is waiting. Will go out of bounds and the young kicker will have to kick it from the 30 again. Speaking about the Vikings, what do you think uh, Bud Grant needs to to get this team in above 500? Well, from what I've seen, Tom, you, you know they have a lot of young players on there mixed with some seasoned veterans, but I'm really not too sure what their number one need is. They have the good running back, they have the quarterback that's been up and down, but he's he's won some football games for them. I I'd say right now the linebacker core has to be rebuilt, which they tried to do last year, drafting number one, Chris mm -hmm. Dolman, who's not playing. Matt Bear's playing this place right now. Bud was quoted in the paper as saying he would not draft. They, they, they picked 10th in the draft, their first choice, 
he would not draft an offensive lineman. He said, you can get those second or third rounds that are still quality players, so he may go for a big running. Dick Gilman always told me that. He said, Dick, don't waste your top two picks on an offensive lineman. Just develop those guys. And we made some mistakes on a couple offensive linemen uh, picked in the second round. If uh, Sid Gilman stays on uh, with the Eagles with the new coach, he would sort of be like a babysitter for Shula. He's a, Shula's <laughs> about 26, and Sid is 74. Oh, well, that's just talk. Here's the kickoff. Lines at the seven-yard line. Hit hard at the 28-yard line, but a good return by the Oklahoma Sooner. The fellow in that uh, gray burr cut is Paul Wiggins. Used to be an all-pro with the Cleveland Browns, and it was coached at Stanford. You know, he coached at San Mateo Junior College when he played in the NFL in the offseason, and I worked with him there, and he's actually a guy that helped me advance career-wise. He talked me into turning a J.C. job for taking a junior college head coaching job that I had turned down, hmm. and he talked me into taking a job. Last year, he was out of football. He was working with Peter Ubroff uh, as a liaison between the upper echelon of the Olympic people and the athletes themselves. He's a very fine assistant coach, and he loves football. Kramer back to throw on the first scrimmage play of the second half, and now throws it away. Knocked down by Scott Snugwell on the Minnesota sideline. They're starting right out booing again. Kramer's been through some bad injuries. He's always come back and played well. I remember his rookie year. Nelson's had a little trouble holding on to the ball. He's lost eight fumbles this year. Watch the man in motion. Now he's going to block on this side the tackle. Huffman 72 and Brent Boyd 62 pull. There's, Brent, there's old Greg coming in from the backside and got right at the exchange point and knocked it out. Good play by Greg Brown. He's still hustling, too. He started out as a free agent. Remember, he was on a construction crew in Washington, D.C. Yeah. First and 10, going the other way now. The Eagles with another turnover. Ernest Jackson gets inside the 30 to the 29. Tim Newton tripped him up. Timmy Newton's a big nose guard, weighing 302 pounds. You know, he leads the nose guards in the National Football League in interceptions. He's got two. That is. I <laughs> like to see him run with it. I saw him run one, I guess, uh, against the 49ers, and he ran like a hurdler. He had big high knee action, huffing and puffing, going down like a big steam engine. They say Chicago has a refrigerator, and they got the ice box. That's yeah. what they call him, I guess. He's, I think he's more like a deep freeze. <laughs> second, second down and seven. Blown back. Jackson. Here's the misdirection handoff. Jackson has to bounce outside. He's going for a loss now at the 34 by Martin. That was the same play that the Minnesota Vikings just fumbled on a minute ago. The Eagles ran it back and lost yard. The counter, and you pull everybody yeah. on the offside, huh? That's the Washington Redskin play. Jackson needs 48 yards to break a the one thousand. That usually means a few bucks. Most contracts for running backs are if you get a thousand yards, you have a $5,000 bonus or something like that. I'll tell you, the, the punishment a running back takes, I don't think you can give them too many bonuses. Third down and 11. Everybody wants to tackle the running back. Iwarski is hit hard at the 43-yard line by Millard. He had four sacks against the Eagles in game number one. He did a real nice job that time. I think that's his 11th or 12th sack. He had 10 coming into the ball game. He's the gentleman we were talking about earlier. Good, tight man-to-man -man coverage. Now watch the three receivers at the bottom of your screen. They come off. Everyone playing a man-to-man, -man, backed up by a free safety. Nobody to throw the ball to. Therefore, they get to the quarterback. Here's the heat coming right here. Flush back to the inside. Here comes Millard around the, from the back door. Oh, he's, him down. he's strong. He really hurt Jaworski with that tackle. Got the arms locked and everything, just like the coaches try to teach. Moran now to punt from the Eagle 40. Nelson is back to the front of the He's going to kick it away from Nelson. Trying for the out of bounds, and it's down on the... No, they're going to call it a touchback. Is that Major Everett? Major Everett thought he'd spiked it back on the one-yard line. They're going to call it a touchback. It was very close. The ball's coming down to the right corner of the screen. It takes a bounce. That was... The ball's in the air. Let's see. Now his left foot was in the end zone. Or right foot was in the end zone, and his rear end is on the goal line. <laughs> of all the beers in this world, there's only one brood around the world. 
from the land of sky blue waters. We're indoors though in Minneapolis now. It's 24 to 14. Tom Brookshire and Dick Vermeil. The Al and the Pussycat combination. <laughs> yeah. Watch how you talk here, Mr. Goodson. Peyton, Walter Peyton, has for the third consecutive year gone over 2,000 yards in total yardage for the Chicago Bears were just notified. And he is starting his 151st game as a running back. Imagine doing that as a running back, 151 times. He is so strong physically, and he maintains good strength through the weight programs. Strong mentally, too, if he has to be. First and ten for Kramer now. Dumps it off. Jordan has it. And his gang tackled at the 26-yard line. Reichenbach and others. Yeah, I think Jordan, you know, here he is, a fine receiver with, I think, 65 receptions right now and has not caught a touchdown. Probably the best Christmas present he could get is one in the end zone, huh? <laughs> Put under his tree. You saw Brown, after that fumble recovery, he took it over to the bench. He took his <laughs> Christmas present with him. Players or something. Second down and two. A lot of time left in this game. Kramer wide open down the middle. Mike Jones... When I mean open, I mean open by 15 yards. Reichenbach had to make the tackle just short of midfield. A, line mu a linebacker must have bit on an underneath uh, pattern, Tom, to turn that guy that loose in that zone area. I tell you, the fact that they didn't do anything, Eagles didn't do anything with that last turnover they got, could hurt them somewhere in that fourth quarter. Take a look at the linebackers as they drop now. Reichenbach, number 55, Kranich, number 52. Kranich ran out of there. Now, maybe it was a man coverage underneath. I don't know, but Wes Hopkins has to put him down. 19 yards. The Vikings now moving on their own. Not much running room there. Brown maybe gets the line of scrimmage. Kramer came in with 25 pass interceptions in the season, and he's, he had one in that first half. So he's got 26, 17 touchdown passes he's had. You know, Tom, when you throw the football touchdown against pass the today. Eagles, you're throwing into their strength. That's the best thing they do is play past you. Well, they played as well as anybody. Yeah. Well, they can take away your game. Second down and nine. Raymer dancing and now unloading the ball into the sidelines, and he's knocked down and helped up by Reggie White. Twenty to thirteen, Cincinnati hanging in there. They can score points. Miami, fourteen to nothing over Buffalo. Twenty-four to ten, the Jets safely in front of Cleveland now. Nope. New England wins. Kansas City going. They're getting after them. Or the Jets win. Of course, the Denver Broncos will be home for the holidays and nobody wants to in professional football at this time you've got to be busy third down and nine they were going deep and trying to throw it away and still almost intercepted let's they're having a the flags are down at the 44 yard line back in the pocket area holding against the vikings the preliminary call here by mccarter I wonder where he was trying to throw that one. Was he just wasting he was, that? He was trying to get the fade down there, and the corner rolled up and did a nice job, Tom, and forced him out of bounds. And then he came back in bounds and appeared late. Number 72 offense, penalty decline, fourth down. Number 72. Number 72, the left tackle. See him the left side of your screen. He's getting a move back to the inside. He'd open the door in there. The only thing he can do now is take him down on a two-point fall. That's three points for that kind of a pin, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Come Huffman. on, Mr. Huffman. 280 pounder improving though he's a very young player Greg Coleman is punny takes a little funny reaching his giddy up and kicks it into the end zone boy he hit that one a 52 yard putt and guess what no flags on that play it's 24 to 14 Philadelphia my wife was having her second child and uh, so Anthony and I were on our own and we went to the store and I was El Paso at this time of the year <laughs> Both Saturday beginning at 12.30 Eastern Time here on CBS Sports. Have you ever done the Sun Bowl before? I've spoken out Louisville before, too. <laughs> yes, I did the Sun Bowl for five or six uh, consecutive years. Almost seemed like a whole career. First and ten. Jackson getting outside, maybe gets a yard. 
Good defense on the outside by Howard, the young linebacker. Good linebacker play by David Howard, standing almost in the middle of your screen, number 99. Now watch him flow inside out. Matt Blair goes up inside, 59. He scrapes, meets the blocker with the inside shoulder, just like he's coached to do it. Fundamentally well-executed linebacker play. It's about what Ed Jones said about Leonard Mitchell at right tackle. Ed Jones says that Leonard Mitchell had the best pass blocking technique of any tackle he'd ever played across from. It's quite a compliment. Yeah, compliment to Ken Iman as well. Second down and nine. Jaworski has quick open for a moment at the 45-yard line of Minnesota. Lee ran with him pretty well. You know, when he gets downfield about 10 yards, he all of a sudden becomes one of the fastest receivers in football. It's the first 10 yards that he isn't as quick as the quickest. <laughs> quick isn't as quick as the quick. No. He had a 13-8 clocking for the the uh, high hurdles, the 100-yard 100, 100, uh, high hurdles. 50-yard throw by number seven, incomplete. on third down and nine Jaworski is 10 of 23 for 185 yards one interception just before halftime he's got time this time oh the receiver being bumped around and it's intercepted and then out of bounds John Turner made the interception he was intending for Keith Baker the ball be snapped back to the quarterback now watch 27 at the bottom of the screen now when the quarterback looks to his right see him start to move he's reading the quarterback's eyes he gets a little jump on the ball now he goes look at the distance he covered when that ball was in the air great free safety play by john turner well make him a receiver what a great catch huh? that's his 24th career pass interception 24th in his career and remember this team came back from a 23 to nothing deficit and beat the eagles 28 23 must be thinking about that while this is going on in the first half. Kramer going for all of it. Romero Young is closely covering Anthony Carter. You know, that's that's an obvious call, but it's a good call. You know, many people after a turnover come out and try to get the big one right off the bat. And if you're going to try to get a big one, you might as well go to Anthony Carter. But Roy Neal Young did a nice job of covering that. He had great position. He was watching he the ball job. all the way, too, wasn't he? I can remember one time when uh, this guy, he's a, he's, a, he's a Pro Bowl caliber corner. Roy Ellis and Hopkins. Here's the draw play. Darren Nelson inside the 40 and breaks inside the 30-yard line. Boy, can he scoot? Reichenbach made a touchdown saving tackle, a linebacker. You know, I can't believe that his longest run this year is 37 yards. I just can't believe that. That's the longest run of his career. I mean, he looks like the kind of guy that's going to get the long one. Now see him slide to the quarterback, he takes the ball, he starts up inside, bounces outside. David Huffman's doing a good job of holding Greg Brown in there. Now he gets a block by the wide receiver right there, Mike Jones, number 89. And those Ooh. guys normally don't have that in their contract, do they? What a move, yeah, what a move he made on the secondary, man. A 23-yard scamper by Nelson. 24 to 14, that's only 10 points. Straight ahead, Nelson now ducking back, gets to the 25. That's that little counter dive that he likes to run off the nose guard, but that's tough to run off Kenny Clark. And even though Dennis Willie's playing well on, on Kenny Clark, it's tough to run those kind of plays on Mr. Clark. Look at this guy. He's not very big. You know, the, the big emphasis in the league this year is publicity for the refrigerator. All the big giant guys. But, you know, there's some little guys playing darn good football. This yeah. guy's 5'9", and I think that's stretched about an inch and a half. Leo Lewis, the little wide receiver that's injured the place for these guys, is shorter than that. If you're good, you can play no matter what the size. Second down and six. Kramer being flushed out. Nelson, touchdown.
Look out, folks. A 25-yard touchdown. A laser shot. On the move, Kramer hit number 20. That's why I like Kramer so much, Tom. He doesn't quit until he's down. He is a competitor. He throws a touchdown every 13 completions in his career. That's pretty good average. And that touchdown they got right before halftime was essential. Yeah. Stenerud now for his third possibility at a point. He's the second all-time scorer and the first active player in scoring in the NFL. Guess what we've got? A three-point game. Encircled, you'll see number 20 with his back to you, the halfback, Darren Nelson. At the top of the circle, Anthony Griggs, number 58. He's in man coverage in this and it's going to take him down the hole inside out. And he actually had too much time and couldn't cover him for that long a period of time. Darren Nelson beats him down the hole. That's a tough coverage when you have to hold up coverage that. Should Hopkins have been stayed back in safety? He'd come up to support the run maybe by accident? No, I, I think they were in some kind of double zone. Hunter took it at the 10 and gets a lot of trouble at the 25. In fact, he's being dragged back and the ball has been taken away. But they're going to call this one back. Action on all fronts. Rosnagel uh, is the player that tried to run in with that stolen pigskin. Do you uh, do you start thinking that you're maybe going to let the other team get back into a game when they suddenly back down to like three points now? Well, I don't know. The third quarter for the Eagle defense has been their best quarter all year. They've only given up 55 points. The fourth quarter has been their bad quarter, giving up 92 points. Holding a lead. Boy, that's a hard thing to teach a young team to do, but it's essential in this league. First and ten. All from the 25. Barola. Jaworski is rushed into throwing the ball out of bounds, and he's dropped at the same time. David Howard, the young linebacker, caught up with Jaworski before he got out of bounds. You know David Howard, number 99, is from Long Beach Poly High School in California. Some great high school, great football players come from there. Gene Washington, the all-pro for the 49ers. Earl McCullough, the, the great Detroit Lion, all out of Long Beach Poly. Daryl Rogers, the football coach at Detroit. Yeah. Long Beach Poly, they've turned out a few. Last four games, the first half, they've outscored everybody 42-27. Look at this, in the second half, 72-24. They've lost 17-12, 20-14, 28-23. Young tight end Little has it just short of the 30-yard line, tackled by Turner. You know, if I were a corner, like Carl Lee was that time, in a bump-and-run position on Mike Quick, I would be nervous. You know, I, I don't think I'd like to play up that close to him. You've got to really love your, your pass rush. And have a good contract. <laughs> a good dog at home and a wife that loves you, right? Not necessarily in that Not order. order. <laughs> New England, 20 to 16, Cincinnati. Getting very close, and as the coach says, they can score a lot. 27-10, the Jets are going to end up in the wild card. Should they win, third down and seven. Jaworski, short of a first down, I believe it's going to be close. Howard tackling Dave Little. Depends on the spot. Now, now Fred might have to make his first head coaching decision a tough look at him right there look at him boy does he look man he's going to go down and look right down the line at it he's going to see for himself his son <laughs> little, little brune dog i called his son you know or the, he was like a rug rat all through training camp he, and you could see him grow up over those years in training camp heck of an athlete that young man is. his daughter Lori's an all-american uh, field hockey player right. at north carolina yeah. kenny iman on the sidelines in the headset bruni of course was always standing in the shadow of Marion Campbell on that sidelines for 19 years they were together. I'll tell you, I was fortunate to be around that pair seven or six years anyway. You guys went all the way. The Super Bowl is the name of this game, and you guys were there in 80. Right away, hand yeah. to hold. This Jackson breaks out. Over the 50. Jackson's going to go over 1,000 yards, and he might score. He doesn't score. He's knocked out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. At the five-yard line. A point to make here, Tom. That was an eye slant designed, you're hoping it for a four and a half yard per carry average with an eye slant play, and it breaks the distance. 
players are the people that make an offense a big play offense. All right, now they get a good block on number 96. Dernard just knocks that big guy out of there. Jackson's got the ball. Don't switch the ball out there like that. <laughs> on. I mean, there he goes, running in. Boy, Mark Denner did a nice job on Newton. Great play and a big one. The Eagles needed a lift at this time in this third period with 548 left. There goes 1,010, huh? 1,010 yards. The third Eagle ever to rush over 1,000. Montgomery did it back in 1981 when he had like 1,400 yards. And Steve Van Buren did it at least two or three years. The short one player, I think, out there. Yeah, they only had 10 guys on the field. Eagles oh. call the timeout. There it is. Mr. Van Buren, Mr. Montgomery, and Ernie oh. Jackson joins. What a select, a select group, huh? And did Bruni need that, huh? Oh, you bet. It's 24-21, and the Eagles are threatening. If you oh, Ernest Jackson this year. Ernest Jackson, outside. Touchdown. No flags are down, and the crowd suddenly gets very quiet. Haddocks, good. The lineman. What a day for Ernest Jackson. Having a good one. Minnesota is 21st in the league in defensing the run, giving off an average of about 140 yards a ball game. But they have been efficient, Tom. They forced teams to run 30, 31 plays to score on the average and forced them to move the ball 160 yards per touchdown. So they've been an efficient defense. McFadden tacking on here. Jaworski is the holder. It's good. 31-21. To the left of your screen, you're going to see Matt Blair, number 59, get blocked. 99 Howard gets turned inside right there. Now Blair, 59, appears to the left side of your screen. He's getting blocked. 34-year-old outside linebacker gets blocked. He goes down on the ground, giving the running lane to Ernest Jackson. Well, that's some kind of a year he's had to think that he was the Pro Bowl player from the, for the Chargers a year ago and traded this September all the way to the other coast. A great acquisition by, by the Eagles. And, you know, I did their preseason games this year when they, they didn't have the running back they needed to be a playoff team. And it was a real good move to go out in this guy. And I think they got a good, you know, didn't have to pay too much to get him. 74 yards in five plays. Of course, the big one, the boat of 59 yards by Jackson. Still only 10 points apart. Now McFadden is going to kick off from the 35. We'll watch and see if he roots it into the corner so that Buster Rhymes does not get a substantial run back. He's trying to tuck it over there, but Rhymes has it at the nine. Can run. Buster Rhymes out of bounds at the nine yard line by Waters. That was some run back. His longest to date was 55 yards, but as we said earlier in the game, Tom, he's been averaging 24.6. The wedge in front of him does a pretty good job. They stopped people from getting after him real early. It allowed him to get going. See the wedge right there? Now he gets flushed. Missed tackle right there by Joel Williams. He should have been in training camp. All right, now he gets a block right there. He switches the ball. Now he's a, he's a track man again. And he is a track man. He's got tremendous speed. Craydeck comes over and tries to get after him. He doesn't. He was a running back for two years in college as well. And Waters finally forces him out. It's first and goal on the nine. Five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. I had a feeling this was going to be a rouser. Nelson, toss back. Touchdown. What a run by Nelson. Happy this is. An 88-yard kickoff return. 
You know something, Tom? You don't see many like that. There have been seven kickoff returns in the league this year for a touchdown in 1,613 attempts. But watch this guy. Watch him give the move. He sets him up to the outside and cuts back inside. And that guy doesn't miss many. That's Wes Hopkins, number 48. He overran the play. He's got to keep that shoulder inside out on him. Nelson greeted at the sidelines. Still it up now. They'll try to make it a three-point game again. trying to get even for the year and finish 8-8. Eight eight. They are a competitive football team. But Grant is so competitive. And take a look at this run back again. You just don't see many. As I said, seven kickoff returns for a touchdown this year in 1,613 attempts. Oh, a miss right there. Joel Williams miss. Spins him around. He gets going. Bernard Wilson gets blocked. Right there. You know, when he got spun around, it looked like he was tackled. I think some people probably let up, let a, little up a little bit. Good speed, good strength and balance within the running ability of this man. He had a fine average as a receiver, 22 yards per catch in college, Tom. And he only played receiver for two years. We ought to give him more privacy in this. He's heavy as dressing right out in yeah. front of the television camera. <laughs> he came into the ball game only needing two yards to surpass the, the Minnesota Viking record. I guess he got it in really good spoiled that, that old record. They gave him a New Jersey for a prize. For Christmas. Yeah. It's the holiday season and we've got a good game here. 31 to 28. Bruni on the sidelines. There's Mr. Brunog. Look at him. He can't let him down. There's Gans, the special teams coach. Fine coach too. Waters is waiting at the Eagle goal line. You know, this guy can put him in the end zone too. Stenerud. No, I think Waters. He's only returned three in my knowledge, uh, but uh, Hunter's the guy that does the great job of returning. There's a kick by John Stenner. Waters has it. He's got a hole. Looks like closing up, though, and he's knocked down at the 25 yard line. You can never relax in this game in the National Football League. There, there's no such thing as a big enough lead. That's the reason it's so tough on coaches. Oh. I mean, when you go home, you've got it inside your head, don't you? Yeah. The game plan and what did it happen and didn't happen. Tom, when we would get beat, there'd be many times in the middle of the night, the, the night of that game, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I swear it was a nightmare. And I'm saying, we didn't really lose today, didn't we? God, it was a nightmare. It's just a dream. We haven't played the game yet. That's the truth, so help me God. Hello, Darren. That's Darren Nelson. Stanford. And the wave goes around here in the Metro Dome. And then he loses it at the 45-yard line. Mike Quick had the ball for an instant. Now they're going to call interference at the Eagle 49-yard line. That's what I was talking about, Tim, Tom, earlier. I wouldn't like to play bump and run on Mike Quick unless I had a safety backing me up all the way. Here's Bud Grant. He loves officials, just like the rest of his coaches used to, you know? He's already dialing the NFL office in New York. You'll see it right in the left-hand corner of your screen. The guy pushing it right there from behind. It's not obvious interference by that shot. It really isn't. The amazing thing is Quick almost caught it anyway. Yeah. First and ten. The ball is on the 48-yard line. Inside by Jackson. And he's stacked up by a, a horde of purple jerseys. That's that stacked defense again. And Fultz, number 50, Tom, shot the gap. Nobody's going to the playoff, but you wouldn't know it by the attitudes of these two teams today. They are popping. Yeah, they're playing hard. It's hard to tell people that, that yeah, it's more than a paycheck, but it really is. 32 left in the third, and they're only three points apart. Second down, 10. Let's 
puts his arm. Jaworski reads it, but misses little in the flat. The crowd is really beginning to get into it now. Wave after wave going around inside. Michael Haddock's got into a little fisticuffs at that time. So now it'll be third and long facing Bruni's team. He's walking among the troops. He's talking to the defensive backs right now. One just weird practicing. He was filling in as a safety. Showing off. He backpedaled and pulled a hamstring. <laughs> third down and ten. Dennard can't hear the snap. He can't hear the shotgun cadence. Yeah, the quarterback is so far back from the ball, away from the line, and they just can't hear it. That's about the only disadvantage I think he had in this situation. Oh, well, they're going to move now. Well, Grant's going to start cheer uh, uh, cheerleading here for the The crowd thinks they've caused this, and in a way, they have. Hey, I can't believe they're going to call that a snap. Yeah, they have. They don't have a choice. The amazing part was that Jaworski even recovered it. He was looking the other way and walking away. Watch Jaworski start to turn his head and talk to the referee as the ball is snapped. See him right there. He's looking away. He snaps the ball. Oh my gosh. I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, that's the first time. Fred Bernie has seen a lot of football. He's never seen anything like that either. That's Marsha Broda to his right. He's talking to the official Dean Look, one of the better officials in the National Football League. Former player at Michigan State, an All-American. Look, Bro he thinks it's funny. Horan now will be punting from the 15-yard line. Carter is on the Minnesota 35. This is a good hand time punt. Good kick. gets to the 36. Talk about an upbeat, crazy contest. There's the quarterback Ron Jaworski talking to Ted Marshall Rowe, the offensive coordinator. Take a look at this thing again. <laughs> I can only remember this back in the, in the school days, you know, in the playgrounds when you played touch football, you know. Look, he's looking the around, way. there's the ball. <laughs> Jaworski had a shot. And you know, that's like a grenade rolling around. Nobody's oh. got to get to it in a hurry. Well, the Eagles have been an exciting team in a lot of ways. But this game is a 31-28 job. Don't believe him, Freddie. Don't believe what he tells you. <laughs> the Vikings have the ball at the 35, call it. First and 10. Tommy Kramer's going all the way at quarterback. Complete. Jones gets to the Eagle 43. Look at Kramer. He's clapping his hands. He's got him moving. You're going to see a man go, win in motion to the left and widen the defense, spread the zone, and open up the hole right inside there. And you can see number 50, Gary Cobb, couldn't make the play. The motion spread the defense on that side of the field, Tom. A 21-yard reception. Vikings trail by three. Inside trap play. Nelson gets in to the 40-yard line. The offensive coordinator, Jerry Burns, for the Minnesota Vikings, does a lot of little motion play type things. He does a real good job of coordinating it. That time, same kind of motion, running play. Time before, motion, slant pattern. He ties things together nicely. Tough on the defense. And this is a young team with, we said, there are 13 rookies on this squad. And that's a lot for a Bud Grant team because he likes people that are long of tooth. <laughs> what Second down and eight. What was that? Long of tooth. Woo. Second down and eight. Carter makes an incredible over-the-shoulder catch. Reverse pivot jump. That ball was hanging.
hanging up there, and he did a great adjustment under the ball, under the throw. Here he is. It'll be to the right corner of your screen. He gets it off up high, and it goes way over the outside shoulder. Now watch him turn and come right on around. Beautifully executed. Wow. Great concentration. Unbelievable. And you know, Kramer threw that on about the second step. They got the coverage they wanted. This guy is 5'11", 162. I bet he doesn't weigh 160 pounds. It's first and goal on the three-yard line. He comes up playing some pass at one time. Nope, get it off. Should have passed it. Anderson goes up and over and doesn't get anything. That's the same action and formation they used to score the blood pattern the last time they had the ball. Remember that 10-point lead? Well, the Vikings may be coming on to take the lead. If they score here, they go up. Crowd senses it. The old Swamp Fox sitting at home right now and saying, hey guys, this is my defense, where are you? Great play sometimes can even beat great defense. That was some catch. One time we were playing Minnesota Vikings in a playoff game and the defense that wasn't playing well. Marion called him into a huddle. They had to greet every word he said on the NFL <laughs> highlight film. <laughs> time with 143 left in the third period for the first time the Vikings take the lead that's right you just can't count Kramer out of a ball game you can boo him you can kick him you can sack him but boy better wait let the clock in the end of the game to beat him because you you got to play all, every 60 plays with that guy yeah? the 2,000 year old kicker now Jan Stinnerud will move the leg into action again oh, straight and true Back set to the right, Teddy Brown, number 23. See a little counter step, full back clear, go up, get a trap block. Look at that well executed trap play in the goal line. Good trap block by number 66, singling touchdown, Terry Tausch. Minnesota by four. The first coach of this franchise when Max Winter took over was my old teammate, the late Norman Van Brocklin. And Marion Campbell was on that staff. On that staff, and he developed the Purple People Eaters. Remember Alan Page? Yeah. I remember, had a coach against him. There's Teddy Brown. Teddy Brown just scored his 36th career touchdown, his seventh of this year. Very productive football player. Fourth all-time receiver as well. There's Johnny Michaels, the former Eagle team mate of mine, the Lion coach, talking to Ted Brown. He told me some stories about you I can't I can't really put on the air, you know. Well, gosh, you don't believe him, do no, you? No, I know, of course I know. We were rookies together, and that was just a couple of years ago. Here's some other scores now. New England, 27-23, and it's not over. Of course, if New England wins, the Denver Broncos are out. Ray Berry's done a good job up there, bringing them all back together and getting all that material working in this, as a unit, you know? Miami beating Buffalo. Chicago still laying it on Detroit, even though there's not Neither much to win for. They can't stop it if they want to there. Yeah, they, that's the big difference between them uh, this year and last year. A deep level of confidence. Waters is the safety man on the Eagle one-yard line, and this man, of course, you've been watching for 19 seasons. Stenerud. Norwegian-born great kicker. This is a squib job. He did this on purpose. Touchdown, and the Eagles will bring it out to the 20. Good decision. Good decision to go ahead and let that. That took that astroturf bounce. That kind of a play is what ages coaches also, oh, isn't it? Huh? Boy, I'll tell you. Herman Hunter, normally the kickoff return man, in fact, the all-time yardage leader for the Eagles, is not in. He's got a pulled groin, so Waters is backing him up. They've got a lot of young, good players. The Jets, 30 to 10 over Cleveland. But the Jets are going to make it, too. That means that Denver, means that Denver will not be in the playoffs if that maintains, and the Jets would host the wild card game. Here we've got a 35-31 game, Minnesota. Jaworski. Jack's looking at the 25. Leonard they, Mitchell let his man get underneath him that time, Tom. Big Leonard Mitchell. I can remember when he was a rookie. Had bad habits, discipline habits, being late to meetings. One night he missed bed check. 
<laughs> so the next day he comes, you know, I have a squad meeting and I am chewing him up one side down the other and he walks into the meeting late. He didn't hear, he didn't hear me chew him out. So help me God. Everybody else will see heard of I was waiting and waiting, you know, like usually. He didn't even hear me chew him out. Come out, he's so late. Second down five. Drive play. No. The line of scrimmage is met by Martin. Ernest Jackson didn't get anything. Now it brings up a very interesting third down call. Third and five. They'll go to that shotgun again. They might call a shotgun play and just go up and take the snap I rather than have him back. I think they'll start, uh, the crowd is saving up for one big blast. You notice how quiet it is right now? Just wait. <laughs> the Viking coaching staff on the sidelines. The that sidelines. happened the last time we were in this place. Remember the official came over the duck there? He did hell with you. <laughs> Intercepted, but Little has the first down and more. Young tight end gets to the 45-yard line. Boy, that ball was almost intercepted. It was. You know, Dave Little originally tried out with the USFL team, Memphis team. Didn't make it. Here he is playing in the National Football League. Nice little pass right to the left. See him? He gets the man-to-man -man coverage. He almost deflects it. He doesn't. When you get man-to-man -man and you beat it, then you have running room. And a good run he made, a 20-yard reception, and a valuable first down. The Eagles trail for the first time, 35-31 now. Closing seconds of quarter number three. Dvorsky dumps it out for Haddocks. To the 43-yard line goes Michael Haddocks at another first down, and the clock continues to roll. That will be the last play of the third period. Boy, that was a long quarter. Wow, we got 15 minutes left. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Minnesota 35, Philadelphia 31. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. The sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Brookshire and Dick Vermeil for the last quarter of the regular season. Bud Grant, you can see he's got the headset on on one sidelines. Fred Bruni replacing his great friend and former head coach Marion Campbell for this last game. And he's his, to the 40-yard line goes Michael Haddock's pickup of a couple. This is the first time the Eagles have scored over 30 points since 1982. Has it been that long? That's been that long. And they're trailing 35-31. The fourth quarter has been the Vikings' best quarter of football. They're plus 44 points in the fourth quarter. The Eagles are minus 12 points in the fourth quarter. Well, you get turnovers at this stage of the game that they really can. That might be the deciding factor as your time will turn it over. Second down and seven on the Minnesota 40. Jaworski from the shotgun. Let's see what happens. Left tackle move. Kenny Reeves moved. You said that some defensive guys yell out their own snap count trying to foul up the offense, huh? Yeah. 66 and 74 offense. Tom, uh, I've had players come out, of, especially in the goal line area, when everyone's all in those four-point stances yeah. and all hunched up like that. Number 66 and 74, still second down. And the um, defensive lineman get up there and he's all sitting and he goes, fight like that. <laughs> <laughs> Offense jumps offside, they move it back and everyone's screaming and, we'll, and they're all looking. Who? No, I didn't say anything. That's yeah. dirty pool. That's that not awful. ethical. I it's effective. <laughs> <laughs> Ten penalties for 93 yards against the Eagles. Now they're on the 45 and second down 12. Big difference. Warski's being rushed. Dumps it to Jackson. Ernest Jackson makes a tackle and miss. And still short of the first down, but he's back to about the 34-yard line, 35-yard line. Studwell making the tackle. Studwell is their normal starting inside linebacker, as we know, Tom. But he has a broken thumb, and it's been pinned and operated on, and you can see in his right hand right there. That's why he is not playing all the time. Can you imagine him trying to intercept the pass with that on there? I bet he's beating people on the head with that big, heavy cast, though. <laughs> I played one day with a seven-pound cast on a broken hand. Really? I, I, I got even with that I got even with uh, Gifford and Alex Webster. I chased them all over the Conor Stadium. 
is the only time we were even. <laughs> Third down and three. from Little. No flags dropped. Good defensive play by David Howard. Now what do you do? I don't know. Howard's another guy out of the USFL. Played for the LA Express. There's 72 players in the National Football League out of the USFL. I think about 17 of them are starting. Not including punters and place kickers. Some quality players. Moran will punt. This is even beyond McFadden's range. Take a look at that cast, Tommy, on Studwell's hand. Look at that. How'd you like to get clobbered by that as you're running back <laughs> walk by, huh? And he likes to do that. You know, he broke all of Butkus' tackling records at Illinois. Yes, he has. Fourth down and too much to gamble. Fourth and three. This early in the fourth quarter. A high snap. Now he's going to run with it. The gamble is off. Moran has the first down inside the 25-yard line of Minnesota. Boy, he scoots pretty quickly. I wonder if that was called or he just looked at it, saw the hole, and took off. You don't see many fake punts. <laughs> Watch the snap. He takes the ball. He's sitting there. It's a call play. It's a call play because you see Cranach going out to block. Good call, Mr. Bruni. I wish we'd have had a camera on Fred Bruni at the time this, that play was called because your heart's got to be in your throat. A good gamble on fourth and three. And now they have a first down. Deep in Minnesota territory. The old goal won't do any good. A touchdown is needed. Dvorsky is in the grasp at the 31-yard line. Martin was first. Pretty smart move not to throw that one. Everybody was covered. He has two and a half sacks. That makes it three and a half sacks for the year. Mr. Martin, what's a half sack? I don't know. They, they, they play wishbone with those quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> That's a good shot. The Eagles now second down and 16 following that sack. Just under 12 minutes left. Quick as the receiver. He can't hang on at the five-yard line. Mike Quick turned back and almost had Willie Teal beaten for it but just couldn't come down with it. Old Jaws is competing, isn't he? Now you're third and long. There's Ted Marshall Brown, wow. the offensive coordinator. He broke me into pro football. 1969, I was a special two teams coach at the Rams and Ted Marshall Broda was the offensive coordinator. And I used to sit in at all the offensive meetings and, and listen and put in game plans and really enjoyed him. Quite a person. Head coach of the Colts for a while. Coach of the year. Third down at 16. The play so far of this game. Short of the first down. This is Baker. Baker still on his feet. Now he's tackled at the 26-yard line. Boy Brown has stayed with the young receiver and got him. It's a 43-yard field goal attempt, I think, Tom. Will bring the Eagles to within one. They trail by four. McFadden coming on. As we said, he loves this firm carpet. And he likes the indoor arenas because the ball carries better. He's 15 for 19 from this distance. Didn't he call you Mr. Brookshire? Yes. He didn't know you very well then, huh? Yeah. He makes me feel like an antique. <laughs> 15 for 19 from this distance. If I had a kicker like this, I'd probably still be coaching. You know that this team though the vikings are they have blocked 67 different kinds of kicks like know you know in the last i don't know how long that is since now 1976 you know huh? the, and the guy that did mo uh, most of that 22 of those blocks were was blair number 59. stay tuned we're not trying to beat a dead horse look at that so second half stats 21 to 7 in this game mcfadden is trying a 43 yard field goal to bring the eagles within one Strong enough, it's straight enough. Boy, to see he boot that thing right down the middle, you know, very consistent. He's from Youngstown State. That makes him 23 for 28 on the year. Pretty good record. There's three Youngstown players right here. Jaworski, him, and there's another guy. They're a tight end. 
Yeah, John Good. Within one point, 35-34, and we got a lot of time left. Christmas Day on CBS Sports begins with the Blue-Gray All-Star Football Classic. Some of the great seniors will be there. Navy's Napoleon McCallum, Notre Dame's Alan Pinkett. Then later on, the NBA returns as Larry Bird, Walton, and the Celtics take on Patrick Ewing. And boy, is he a force. That's the Knicks against the Celtics. All of that here on CBS on Christmas Day. I don't know if I'd kick it to this guy again. Try to try to get it down into the corner somewhere. Would yeah. you squib it? Would you squib it? I don't know. Maybe lay it down. No, trouble is with squibs, you get too good a field position. Yeah, they get out over the 35 yeah, right. automatically. But this darn guy, Buster Rhymes, I know I can see why he didn't get kicked off the team when he was <laughs> cut practice one day. He just got the wrong airplane zone. It's high and short. Ryan is going to come out running. Not this time at the 28. Good coverage. Ryan Good coverage. Is smothered. Clay knocked down under that very quickly. New England has a wild card. The final score in now. And it wasn't easy. 34 to 23. It's been a long time since they've been in the playoffs. The Jets are also going to host the wild card now if they continue and beat Cleveland. And this means the Denver Broncos. Uh, We'll be sitting around in a foot of snow out in the Mile High area. With 11 wins. Can you believe that? Yeah. And not in the playoffs? And they came back from the other side of the great beyond. This Buster, Buster Rhymes is hurt. I didn't see him get hit. His 88-yard kickoff return. Uh, the highlight of almost any season. He's tough. Now let's hear the crowd cheer. I like it now. Let's hear it. He's done a heck of a job for him. Return, I think, now about 51, 54 uh, kickoff returns. Miami, 28 to nothing. They cinch up the AFC Eastern Division. And they're, of course, the only team that has handled the Chicago Bears. That's the final score. Miami wins it. And now the Eagle defense for the Miami offense. Trying to run from the top. This is Anderson on the outside. Gets to the 35 for Reggie White tackled him. Now you're not a good running team, but if you would run right now, the clock would. Yeah, you need extra time. This guy throws so many passes in two minutes. I really think sometimes teams are not real good running teams because they don't run enough. That's all. They just don't call enough. Well, the line almost forgets how to do anything but pass block, don't they? Well, that can happen, I guess, but it, it does sometimes make you a little passive. How about I'll tell you, though, Tom, of the top, yeah. of the 14 top teams in rush attempts, 10 teams are winning. 10 of them. The very fact that they rush it a lot. Huh? That's right. And at the top 14 teams' pass attempts, seven of them are winning. And seven of them are losing. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it means exactly, but it's interesting. No, in fact, it's six of them are winning and eight of them are losing. I was wrong. Second down and five now. The... Don't forget the game coming up decides the last playoff spot. The Cowboys and the 49ers. If Dallas beats San Francisco, San Francisco can forget it. I'll tell you, Tom, you were with us. The first time the Eagles made the playoff in our program, 1978, we were at a party at the Bookbinders, hosted by Albert and John Taxon. When you heard about it. And we heard that we had made the playoffs because I think a game that Green Bay was involved in and something, they beat somebody and put us into the wild card game against the Atlanta. Remember that? Yep. What a... A great, great. In fact, it was best party I think of ever. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. That's the one that put you over the top and started the program at full speed. Second down and five. The reverse play to number 89, Mike Jones. Jones is tackled at the line of scrimmage by Ellis. He tackled himself on that one. That's just poor running. Kramer was trying to block for him. He ran over his own quarterback. I think he found somebody he could run into. That was just poor running. That play was executed well enough to be a bigger play in that. We were in the Eagle locker room a couple of weeks ago, and Johnny McDonough, our director, had a great CBS scarf around his neck, you yeah. know, for the cold weather. And Ellis said, I, I need that. I want that, you know. So McDonough gave him that scarf. Right. But that guy, with the contract he's at, he can afford to buy a box full. Put a car around the scar. He's done a great job for a 12th round draft choice. Jerry Ray Ellis. Third and five. It is first down at the 41 yard line. Number five, Mike Jones. 
Watch the reverse that was run a minute ago. Here he is coming with the ball. Now watch the quarterback, number nine. He's supposed to get a block right here. Number nine, <laughs> he's looking for someone to devastate. <laughs> Woo! You see, he could have gone inside or outside that one. That's right. Kramer, was, Kramer looked like an old tailback on that, that was one, a, didn't he? A wind block. You know, <laughs> trying to knock him down with a wind that you create as you miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the last game of the season, at least you don't have to look at the movies and have everybody laugh, right? Yeah, no, no, they'll be in tomorrow look at movies. First and ten, if you win. That's right, if you win the last game. Of the year. Otherwise, everybody just slinks off, goes home. Kramer being dropped. Reggie White gets him at the 38. What a defensive end he's becoming. Yeah, he's dominating out there. And he's Kenny Clark, the seventh sack. Seventh sack? You know, a sack computes to be worth about three points to the winning team. Each sack plus you get over your opponent. I told you Dan Reeves now figures the sacks in with the takeaways, yeah. giveaways as part of their yeah. ratio. Is that important? You bet it is. Kenny Clark, nose guard. I don't know if any nose tackle uh, has any more sacks than, than Kenny Clark does. He's a team player too. Really like him. He came into the ball game with 35 and a half career sacks. Second down and 12. Down four rush line for the Eagles. And you know who's going to be throwing The reverse, the Statue of Liberty to Barry Nelson. Nelson hit hard, but drives to the 48-yard line. And bodies are still falling. Remember we were talking about Minnesota has everything in their offense? Kramer's limping back there. How can he limp on a Statue of Liberty? He hit it out. <laughs> Did the statue kick him? Or what? He is limping. There's a new play out of Bud Grant's books. He's got him. Is Irwin in another fight? Yeah, he goes, there he was. There he is. Look at him. No, I won't hire him as a lawyer, but he won't finish the case. <laughs> He's a little tougher than Raymond Burr. Watch the quarterback as he drops back now. Now watch him fake the pass, high arm over fake, hands it off right there, and off it goes. It, it worked right there. I, Kenny Clark is having a hard time getting out of that wrestling hold he was in. Bernard Wilson, number 22, puts him down. Well, you ever seen so much action around the ball carriers on all sides? Yeah. All right, third down, and call it two, but it's almost three. Bone back is Nelson, number 20. Keep watching him. Did he have the first down? I think he made it. Just in Eagle territory, Wes Hopkins met him there. 7.27 on the clock. Minnesota 35, Philadelphia 34. And the Vikings never led until, until the third quarter. You know, the other thing with a Bud Grant team, you can't predict him doing the usual. I mean, for example, the smart thing to do for a lot of people right now is, like you said, hang on to the football and eat up the clock. But he, he's liable to throw right here on first down. You know, that's just, and go deep. The Jets will be the host of the wild card game against New England. It's 37 to 10 now. Looks like they might be peaking at the right time. And Cleveland's got a good defensive ball club. No, well, they do. Schottenheimer's done some job there, hasn't he? He's done a great job. One of our old guys is the captain of the defense, Carl Hastings. Yeah, that's right. Sure. First and 10. Now, that's too bad when you have to use a timeout. Burns one of the timeouts that maybe the Vikings will need. The Eagles need some points. They trail by one. His last game, Jan Stinner. You know, he could be put in a position as this game goes on to try to win a ball game in his last game. Look at this. 373 field goals, points. Still holds the Super Bowl record in Super Bowl IV for Henry Stram. He kicked a 48-yarder. Actually sort of started that game going the way of Kansas City. Quite a player. I think a year ago he had the best percentage, didn't he? 23 out of 24. He was amazing. Yeah. Anyway, this is his last game. He's been a tremendous person. And a great player. First and ten now. Six to pass, six left. Kramer's throwing it, and he's being chased out. And now dumps it to Darren Nelson, who was closely covered at the 44. See what I mean? Here he is, first down, throwing the ball. He's not worried about eating up the clock. Boy, he's mad, too. He went over to the official thinking his receiver had been tackled. This guy's been a, a real good addition to the community up here in Minnesota. He's uh, real heavy in working with the Big Brothers program and that kind of stuff. Donates a lot of his time. You talking about Tommy Kramer? Tommy Kramer, yep. yeah. 
Everybody wants to second guess the quarterback. Uh, the Buck really does stop there taking that snap. 6.51 on the clock. Vikings lead by one point. Slaver has the ball. Oh. I believe it was Reggie Wilkes that got his hand on it. That's two batted passes for him today. Bill Friel, my eyes up here in the booth, picked that up very quickly. Red, this Wilkes right there in the bottom of your screen, big 91. He's double teamed there by the tight end and the tackle. Now he comes back off and spins back into the play. Now right now, the quarterback throws. He gets his hands up. You didn't get to see him hit it. Brings up an interesting call here, just into Eagle territory at the 49, a third and 10. The Eagles have their nickel package in there, don't they? Wes Hopkins is actually playing a linebacker, and here comes the four-man rush. Waymer going to the outside, a short of a first down, tackled by Herman Edwards to Sammy White. That's too far a distance for a field goal attempt, isn't it? Yes. Coleman will try to nail it into the corner. He's had 11 inside the 20-yard line for Bud Grant this year. He's pretty good at getting those things out uh, inside the 10 time. We've seen him do it a number of times in the other three ball games that we did. What's the safety man got to make sure? He, if, has, he, has he got a fair catch to keep it from dying maybe if, at the yeah. four or five-yard line to make sure? Yeah, well, you know, he, he maybe back up to the eight and feel it, but not okay. any further back. Coleman against Cooper. Almost blocked. Time. Great job right there. Joey Browner, the special teams pro bowler. Now the Eagles have to go over 40 yards to get a field goal attempt. The pro bowl special teams player right here doing his job. He's a starting strong safety down there doing his job as a special teams player. had that ball hit him. I know it. They all got their hands together and they said, all right, guys, we've got him down here. Let's keep him down here. They've got to get a 40-yard attempt somewhere in there to be to give McFadden a 40-yard field goal to win. Knowing Ted Marshall Burrow like I do and, and just following what the Eagles have done in the past, you know, like they beat Atlanta on a play in the overtime out of this area, they'll throw the ball. From quick with 99 yards right. in the overtime. That takes a lot of nerve to take the snap and throw it down in there. In the Viking end zone where all those fans are. They're, they're giving the Eagles huddle a little bit of static right now down there. This is a great city for pro football. This place is sold out. Last game of the year, no playoff hopes. There are cities right now that they have the ball game. There's 24,000 people there because there's no hope. <laughs> You've got to give credit to the Minnesota fans, great fans. You know, the NFL average this year for all the games is 59, right at 60,000. Really? It's really come back. Of course, the playoff the, situation has had everybody... The ratings have really gone up since they put you and I together, too, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of broken sets, but a, but a lot of people watching. A lot of baloney, <laughs> too. 5-5-5 five, five, five in the fourth quarter of the last game for both of these teams. And at a point apart. I think that's a pretty good matchup. down in that end zone, giving Jaworski and the Eagle Huddle a lot of static. See that number 73 standing right there, Steve Kenny? I can remember when he was a, a rookie free agent struggling to make the football team, and we noticed him just hobbling all the time. And one day I went over to him in stretching exercise, and I said, take your shoe off. Pulls his shoe off, and his foot is one massive blister, but he wouldn't tell anybody because he didn't <laughs> want to miss practice. He was trying to make the football team. There he is, number 73. Is he a piece of work? gets into it, and the Eagles have to drive at least 50 yards to get a field goal shot to win. Going from the end zone. Haddox has it at the 10-yard line. And is driven back to the 6-yard line. Jaworski did a good job of getting that one off. He's had a lot of practice over the years in Philadelphia getting the ball off under her harassment, you know. Somebody put a pretty good rush on him. I believe it was Matt Blair, was it? I'm not sure. No, I think Blair was dropped off. I think it was the defensive left end again. Fred Bruni, head coach for this game. 
Looks like he's saying, composed. He'd like to be a head coach, but for some reason, no one ever really considers him that. But he is a fine football coach. Well, I know the players that play for him respect him like gangbusters. Second down and four. Inside handoff. Jackson comes out for the first down. Running with the ball covered up with both arms. The Gets out to the 15. The backside defensive end on that play. Keith Millard, 75, has got to come down inside and, and make that cutback tackle, and he's not doing it. Good job of blocking by Ken Reeves, number 66. Take a look at the blocking on the left side here as they come off the ball. Steve Kenny, 63, Reeves, 66. On the right side is big Leonard Mitchell. He gets stuffed a little bit. Ron Black, see that cutback hole? That's got to be filled. In fact, actually, Millard overran it. Jackson loves that. That's the one he broke off in the long run. Love it, yeah. You can see the clock inserted there. That's first and ten. Jackson is 102 yards rushing for the day. Jaworski going for a quick and the receiver had broken off his pattern and the closest person to the ball was Carl Lee, the defender. Ron expected him to run a fade against the bump and run coverage and uh, uh, Mike Quick didn't do it. Breakdown of communication. Tommy McDonald used to run his own pass routes. He got open a lot. Did he? But he scared Throw me a long one. I'm going over here. When I get to the number, I'll break right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ernie's up over 100 yards, 102 yards, 23 rushes, two touchdowns. But all this won't mean much if they don't win this one for the swap box. That's what they're trying to do today. Second down and 10. Jaworski. In and out of Kenny Jackson's hands. Great coverage by Willie Teal. That ball Great was coverage. right on, too. If it wasn't perfect coverage, Jackson would have gone with it. Willie Teal is a law enforcement major in college, and here he's enforcing the law. Pass defense right there. Super play. <laughs> well done. Third down and 10. 4.13 on the clock. The Eagles have it's got good. to do something with the ball this time. They might not get it back. Third down and 10. Henrik says he can't hear. Remember what happened earlier. I guarantee he won't snap it this time until he can hear. Minnesota's got a couple fresh defensive ends in the ball game to pass rush. They have Bob Smith playing left defensive end over there on Big Leonard Mitchell, and they have Neil Elsher over at the number 73 playing the defensive end. They don't play very much, so they're really fresh right now to get the good rush. You cannot penalize a home team, home crowd. The center, look at Mark Bennett looking back at the quarterback. He finally saw the cadence. Quick is open. It bounces off the defensive back. Carl Lee. That's fourth and ten. Getting a little greedy going that deep on that pass. Yeah. See it right here. He underthrew it. Good thing he turned to look back. Yeah. They called him on that. Moran is back to punt. Willie really Gamble and run it from there. They no it. Carter is back at this Minnesota 45. This is a great time to evaluate your punter. Right now, all those other ones don't. Hey, here's when you evaluate it. I had a punter one day punt the ball from the center on the goal line and he missed it. I remember they dropped it and Mike Michelle dropped it. Just the Redskins. The fifth punt of the day for Mike Duran. This is a pretty good kick. It's sort of a slider. You got to be careful with it. Takes an eagle bounce, and the Vikings will have the ball at their own 41-yard line. 35-34, 3.59 left. <laughs> Tom Brookshire and Dick Vermeil. What'd you say it was grapeanosis? That's when the... When you drink too much wine. <laughs> <laughs> too much <laughs> white wine, right? That's really been a fun year working with you, Dick. Yeah, uh, I've enjoyed it too, Tom. I've learned Great a, experience. I've learned a lot of football, and uh, I hope in some way that that we brought some extra things to the people out there because it's a fun game and it's great to watch it on television. A lot of people have grown up not even going to the ballpark. They've yeah. grown up on television yeah. football and you add a lot to it. You're a great dimension to CBS. Thank you. 
and we still got 359 and that one point margin and I'll guarantee you the Eagles are going to let it all fly on defense this series this is Anderson picks up about six or seven yards and now, now we got a flags are thrown everywhere and there was almost a fight I saw Wes Hopkins mixing it up with some receiver that was trying to block downfield a great block by the offensive left tackle I don't know if it was Rouse 68 or Huffman 72 but Greg Brown really got knocked off the ball that time somebody's down an eagle down over there Dean look facing us number 49 the side judge talking to McCarter 48 in the middle of your screen Wes Hopkins does something here that gets a personal foul call yeah there he is he clubs him oh, there ooh. he goes right there God Wes you shouldn't be doing that I've seen him do that before there's a player down on the Eagle sidelines Otho Davis I can see is bending over the player I think that might be Brown uh, is it, it's 93 Thomas Struthers Thomas Struthers Jackson State defensive lineman he broke it he broke a hand in uh, training camp in 84 and he was an injured reserve through uh, until December Dallas taking Seven. the early lead on San Francisco don't forget following this game we immediately take you right out there to watch that action at Candlestick Park the Cowboys and the 49ers yeah Washington of course hoping that for once the Dallas Cowboys win a game they'll be pulling for them because if they beat San Francisco Washington will somehow get into the playoffs with their new young quarterback Herr Schrader <laughs> AFC the Dolphins have clinched it 28 to nothing they beat Buffalo today 37 to 10 the Jets will host the wild card game against the Patriots the Patriots won to 34 23 37 17 is the they're really putting it to him Ditka rolls on the player down Thomas Struthers is must have some kind of a I can't tell where they're working on it Tom crazy thing about the playoff though it's all sudden death that no matter what Chicago's done all year doesn't mean a yeah. thing when they tee it up and go into the playoffs because you're only as good as that game right right it looks like they're working on a knee you know Claude Humphrey is responsible for Thomas Struthers being here he recommended him and Claude Humphrey would know a good football player especially at that defensive end position and he recommended him to Swamp Fox and that's why he ended up with Philadelphia Otho Davis, the trainer, how, how important is the trainer to you as the head coach? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, uh, huh? You live and die with those guys. I can remember Otho Davis staying up all night with uh, Carl Harrison and gave him treatment all through the night on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. That's on a Thursday night in preparation to play Pittsburgh Steelers on that Sunday, in which time we beat him, beat Pittsburgh, and they were world champions. Huh? He stayed at the slept right there in the dorm and gave him treatment every hour on the hour mm -hmm. to get him ready to play and he played the Eagle alumni the other night at a dinner gave Otho Davis a, an award for an outstanding job as trainer and um, Frank Wiecek a trainer that used to yeah. try to keep us together back in the early days of the Eagles and it's uh, it's nice that you recognize how much uh, oh you hey, those guys they are work for you and plus Otho Davis is a practical joker that you'd never know what he's gonna do I mean, he, he's pulled so many jokes in training camp on different people, all the rookies. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable things that he does. <laughs> you know what? The trainer is about half chaplain, too. Yeah. Guys will go in there and talk to him. They probably are afraid to talk to the coach or their yeah. own wives, you know? Yeah. Number 93 to the right side of your screen. You see he's working back outside in on the play, and you're going to see a, a player, his own guy right there, come across his leg, number 55, Mike Reichenbach. The good news is that they have the best possible medical uh, core that you can have now surrounding these football teams, and that's important. That's Tim Watterson, the assistant trainer, helping out. Ron O'Neill was the assistant trainer when I was there. He's a great trainer. He's now the head trainer of the New England Patriots. Well, you know that room of yours looks like Mayo Clinic. That's the darndest thing in Philadelphia. Plus, all that stuff he's got hanging all over the wall. And he was president of the Trainers Association for a long time, so I think people <laughs> sent him a lot of equipment to experiment with. 35-34. <laughs> now, Minnesota's got to keep the ball. It's first and ten. Three and a half minutes left. The Eagles have two timeouts left. 
Minnesota has two left. Anderson picks up about six yards. Pretty good looking bull run that time. I tell you this though, you can't sit here and predict that Bud Grant's team will just try to run the clock out. It's amazing. You know, the one game we were doing with them, remember they went deep for a big one. And as you said early in the game, nobody can take you to those sticks better than Kramer late in the game. He yes, can he really can work the clock. Fred Bruni on the sidelines. Right now, it's sort of out of his hands. Tony Gray, Tommy Kramer has 14 final two-minute drive wins in his career. Second down and a long three, maybe four. Anderson thrown for a loss back to the 45-yard line by Darby. There's one timeout time now. Out. Yep. The two-minute warning will give them one chance to stop the clock. Right. All he needs is a field goal shot. McFadden is waiting, but the Eagles don't have the ball. Third down and six. Third down and six. Kramer. Out of bounds. And the Eagle defense would have made Swamp Fox proud. There's McFadden now, the barefooted one. They'll try to get it close enough so they can swing the leg. Imagine, you know, the difference between here's a young guy in the league as a kicker and then the, the old-timer retiring the day. What a contrast in two kickers, huh? Yeah, I, I call him Mr. Stenerud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a great one. And this young kicker, McFadden, has won the respect of everybody. He is probably the brightest young kicker of them all. Cooper now is back, and Coleman is the punter. Fourth and six. The sixth punt for Coleman. Fifteen seconds. I only got part of that. They're taking it down to fifteen seconds, I believe is what they said. Two twenty is on the official insert that you see. That's the clock. The zebras carry a watch, but sometimes they can't read it. Fourth down and six. Holman's punch. So the out of bounds not what the Vikings wanted to do there. It's out of bounds at the Eagle 27 yard line and that was not a good punt. Mm -hmm. The only advantage to it is he couldn't return it. You know. Tonight on CBS, and don't forget that Dallas 49ers game is coming up, the rest of it. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes, a special presentation of a Christmas carol and then Crazy Like a Fox with my hero Jack Warden. That's one of my favorite shows. Is it really? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Anyway, it's a good night on CBS, and we wouldn't kid you, know, <laughs> This is going to be some drive here. First and 10 on the 27. Shotgun. Jaworski the time, and underthrows Kenny Jackson at the 44-yard line. The pressure was handled. They got a four-man <laughs> rush in there. Pretty good rush. Ron Jaworski's had some problems late in the games the last month. Yeah. I'd like to see Ron try to get those seven, eight-yard gains right here, you know, and not be throwing 20 to 25 yards downfield because those, those type of passes are a lower percentage, and that's obvious. It's a good point. That's what probably they're sending in the information. Second down and 10. Jaworski has thrown the ball 40 times already. Completing the black to Hanks. He's got speed. So he got a block. He's finally knocked out of bounds at the 45 by Teal. He got a block by Jackson out there that allowed him to go ahead and really get the corner turn. Where did everybody go? Man-to-man -man coverage, and the inside guy didn't get out there on him. Some linebacker must have gone to Duluth. <laughs> Can't believe you wouldn't have anybody assigned to cover the first back out. I think that there had to be a guy assigned to him. You know, just didn't get there. A 17-yard pickup. McFadden is two of five over 50 yards. So they've got to get inside the 30. Jaworski trying for quick. He's closely covered by at least two Vikings. Browner was the safety man in charge. He would almost balance things out. 
in this series. But two, two, the teams play each other twice in one year. Minnesota takes it away in the fourth quarter last time. You know, balance it out. Eagle take it away this time. Can this be the quietest place when it's quiet and oh, the noisiest when it's noisy? It is. It, I mean, it just, it just, it's very silent. Listen, we want to thank the people that make this possible. Executive producer Terry O'Neill. Senior producer Charles H. Milton III, the old rancher from Colorado. Red Eye. Michael Burks, who's our head coach. And Michael, you've done a heck of a job, Mike, regardless of That's right. what everybody else says. says. Right? <laughs> now, we have a great time, and it's a team effort. And you give us our game plan, and we hope it works out. Johnny McDonough, the R.C. Gorman of uh, the director's <laughs> world, uh, gives you all the great pictures. Bob Rowe, Lisa Elias, Bill Nader, and all the camera people and audio people that make it work it's more than just a couple of guys sitting on television craig Gleber, who does all our numbers and stats and craig it's been great working with you all year and billy Friel, who tries to keep me out of trouble by giving Imp me the numbers Imp impossible, impossible. <laughs> but it's really been fun and we appreciate you people i i wish we could mention every person that technically helps us and mcfadden knows he's going to get the call and I just wonder what goes through kickers' minds when they know that it's going to all come down to them. That's Dr. Phillips standing right there, Tom, with the mustache. I didn't recognize him for a while with that big stash he's got on that lip. <laughs> Looks like a Russian general. <laughs> <laughs> McFadden back there isn't even breathing right now. Yeah. But I'll tell you, he's a fearless you know, the one thing right inside, now, huh? The Eagles got a little edge in terms of predicting coverages. Minnesota can't afford to go to just pure zone because if they do, you know, you can get those 10 and 12 yard gains and all of a sudden they're in field goal range. They'll have to probably stay with man-to-man -man combinations. But Grant knows that McFadden might win this game. McFadden is two of two today, 26 and 43 yards. Shot there. Complete to Jackson who holds on. Short of the first down at the Viking 46, Matt Blair drilled the young receiver there. Minnesota did a great job of jamming the receivers on the line of scrimmage that time. They were fortunate to get deep enough to clear out for that underneath pattern. The Eagles have one more timeout left. Third down and two. Jaworski to quick. Quick pull down from behind at the 35. Lee making a shoestring tackle. They're at a 52-yard field goal right now, Tom. That's too far, isn't it? Yeah. It's not too far, but you, the percentages aren't as good. We said earlier that the natural grass at San Diego, young McFadden missed two field goals. He's never missed two in one game before. He likes the carpet. Flags are down. Let's see what this is. It's on the Vikings. They're probably going to take the gain and decline the penalty, the Eagles I'm speaking of. Holy mackerel, what's that? This is Number who on the defense? Number 30. That's Isaac Holt, the defensive back. He must have hit a receiver away from the action. He was up playing bump and run, I think. The point here is, how long do you go before you take the field goal now and kick it? Do you want to fool around and take a couple of snaps? Yeah, I would. I tell you, you don't give this guy too much time. I just wouldn't want to fumble a snap or lose the ball and not get a chance to kick it. I wonder what Coach Grant's thinking on that call. This would be from the 27-yard line, so it would be a 37-yard field goal attempt if they tried it now. The Eagles are out of timeouts. I'll tell you, that's a decision you got to make when you're out of timeouts and you've got a first down at the 20. The ball would be held at the 27. That's a 37-yard field goal attempt. That's a gimme for him. That's a chip How shot. How much he's, longer would you wait? He's 10 for 10 right now, but I don't know if I want to give Minnesota a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, boy. That's right. Kramer might take Kramer. a right back down, huh? It's 35-31. He may have to go to the men's room. He's been drinking water on the <laughs> chug lugging one cup after another on the sidelines. There's Stenerud. He's been through this. Well, when you're born in 1942, second year of World War, you've seen a few games come through. Yeah, you bet. Look at this. Now he's on his fourth cup. I want some of that. <laughs> I really wonder what is going through your mind. Is he just thinking like a golfer? Is he just thinking about relaxing and stroking it? I guess he, so, huh? He is so calm. 
you know, and, and so uh, he's like Clark Kent, the meek, mild-mannered kid until he gets in position to kick. <laughs> then he's the he's a vertical bulldog, right? Okay, it's first and ten, the Eagles are, have got the regular tee going, the eye. Jackson covers it up, that's a good guy to hand it to. The 21-yard line, he loses a yard. Minnesota called time. Minnesota uses one of their timeouts, so they'll have one timeout left. There's the man of the moment, of the season. The last game, the last minute and 23 seconds, and he's going to decide whether they win one or not. Did I ever tell you the story on horse movement in this same situation for me, like uh, my second year there <laughs> in Washington? We were playing the Redskins in Vet Stadium, and we had a chance. We drove it down the field. We had a chance to tie the ball game up with a field goal. And he's, he's standing over next to me, and I, I said, well, Horsey, what do you think? And he says, how about a fake? <laughs> <laughs> you're, pretty, you're in oh, trouble when your kicker doesn't you know want to kick it, huh? He went in and kicked it to the left about five yards. And how they beat us. How about a fake, huh? How about a fake? Brad Bruni, his first game as a head coach, and the team is trailing by one point. Remember, the Eagles led the entire game to late in the third period, and that's the first time that the Vikings went ahead. It's been a great game to do. Really and has. Send back to Philadelphia and to these fine fans in Minnesota. Boy, you know what Eagle football does for the numbers that the Nielsen ratings at CBS in Philadelphia? They get 55 shares. There goes another, another glass of water. I think that must be beer in that stuff over there. He's tough, huh? He sloshes when he walks, but he's a great kicker. He's 22 of 27. He is 10 for 10 between the 30 and the 39. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty good percentage, isn't it? Not bad. Second down and 11. Jackson breaks out and is finally tackled oh. at the 15. You see how he makes those short, choppy steps and he just sort of swerves around in that hole. They finally got finally gotten uh, McFadden away from the water table table one timeout left for Minnesota they just used a second huh? they're out of timeout out of timeout no timeouts left no games left the clock is wrong one All right, they just changed it on the clock now that clock man is not very fast not huh? as fast as our guys yeah. up here Jaworski goes over and remember the kickers now when they're at normal practice sessions Horan and McFadden are all by themselves. They're over there on the other side working with their drops and what they're doing. And at this time, I guess you couldn't talk to anybody else anyway. It's all yours. Yeah. The quarterback, he's talking to normal people all the time, you know. Yeah. There's Ted Marshall Broder facing us with the glasses, and that was Ken Imons, the offensive line coach, standing to the right. Roy now Nell. he went over to Roy Nell. He's going to get another Gosh, glass of water. Another. He's going. Maybe he's chewing tobacco and he's spitting in that cup, huh? Maybe that's Could that what be it, it is. That could be it. He's left a lot of cuts there. He's going through the whole supply. Yeah, I think he's 10 for 10, 10, 10 on cups right now. <laughs> From any distance, right? What a great kid. 23 year older, his second year, a number 12 draft choice. He was the MVP in special teams this year. Most valuable player. Nobody still, nobody's looking at him or talking to him. He just wanders in and out of... forget Dallas and the 49ers next. Jaworski takes it and kneels. You, you see what he did? He took the snap and moved over to the middle of the field and knelt down right there so they get the ball right in the middle. Jaworski is the holder. Seven will hold for eight. Both Youngstown State grads. It's wild, isn't it? The snapper is getting over it. I I think, isn't it? No, it yeah. does. Mark Dennard. Mark Dennard. A 35-yard attempt. McFadden wins. I bet he goes right back over to the water table. <laughs> nice job by Mr. McFadden. Huh. Fred says, hey, this head coach is not tough. Just get it down to the final seconds and let him kick to win the game. Here it is from the end zone. Gurgle, gurgle. All the linemen set up to the inside. He gets it up straight down the middle. Oh, no, he oh. gets it over. He moves to the, it's a good thing Ron but moved to the right and knelt down at that time. Look at Bruno. <laughs> Acting like it doesn't matter, right? 
Well, Swamp Fox, they've got it written on their defensive tape. They were playing this one for you. Here he is again. You can tell. Jaworski's great at doing that. Happiness is, huh? We're not over with. There are 40 seconds left. Now, what do you do with the kickoff? I think you kick it full. You go ahead and bang it away. Yeah, you keep it away from uh, Buster Rhymes. Well, with with 40 seconds to go, I think I'd go ahead and squib it. Yeah, it could come down to this fella again. He doesn't have enough experience, so. <laughs> he wouldn't crack under the pressure. And McFadden really answered the bell there, didn't he? He did. It was a nice drive. They did a good job. And then that 15-yard personal foul penalty. Buster Ryan, the man you're looking at, has 162 yards in kickoff return yardage today. I'm curious to see what they do here. I wouldn't doubt that they scribble down. No, he's kicking right, it away. Kicking it full, and the defense will go to work. Ryan will take this one. Now he's got it. The impetus of the ball touches it down. Touch back to the 20-yard line. That's another good evaluation of McFadden's character. That's the best kickoff he's gotten all day. What he needed the most. A high one, and it carried to the corner. One yard line in the corner. Look at Jaworski. Yeah, hey, he loves to win, I'll tell you that. Well, you can play a lot of good, relaxed golf when you've won that last game of the year, you know? Well, he owns his own golf course now, so he can just walk out there and kneel most in his backyard and pounce it around on that little round ball. Hope he lets us caddy out there someday. Tommy Kramer can bring this team a long way. Now, they're 80 yards away. And Stenerud is on the sidelines. No One timeouts. Of the great kickers. Carter and Sammy White, the receivers. No timeouts left. Kramer, Reggie White, tackles the quarterback, and there is a flag thrown right in the middle of the pile. That is the eighth sack, I believe, the most the Eagles have that gives them gotten this year. 53 sacks on the year. That's a pretty good job. Last year they had 60, fourth best in the NFL. They came into the league 13th in the NFL with 45. That's a lot of sacks in one game. Holding number 76 on the offense. Penalty decline. The quarterback was in the grasp of control. Second down. 35 seconds. Number nine for the Vikings. Boy, wouldn't it be something if he could get it down yeah. and win the game on the last tip of that clock. Kramer, Joy catches it. It's caught by number 89, Mike Jones. She's doing a nice job of catching that ball right between those two people. No timeout, so the clock will continue to roll. Kramer now, with the flags flying, gets it to Nelson to the 38-yard line. I think they called offsides in the defense, Tom. It was almost a free one then. That'll stop the clock also, with 11 seconds left. I don't know if they've got enough time to throw another short one. They've got to go uh, the distance with it, in terms of field goal distance. The flags were dropped almost at the snap. I don't think. Offside, Reg number 71 on the defense. Penalty decline, first down. First down call, Kenny Clark. Let's see, they're on the 38. No timeouts. The penalty did one thing. It stopped the clock. That was important. They need at least 35 yards. 35 more yards. And then they would give Stinnerud a chance in his last game. He's only 17 for 60 outside the 50 in his career. Side arming and throwing it out of bounds. Ronell Young can't get it in bounds. Six seconds on that clock. This is Bruni's atmosphere. He likes this. The defense is, it's up to the secondary. We did a game earlier in the year when the Vikings were playing the Rams. Remember when they went the length of the field and tried to get in from the one yard line? Yeah. And Nelson was tackled and they lost it. And I'll tell you, Bud Grant never even broke stride. He just said you had to go for the win. That's what they're trying to do right now. A holy ghost. He's he got it. Caught. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Stop the clock. At the 15-yard line, Anthony Carter somehow caught the ball. The game is over. over. 
the game is over. The Eagles are leaving the field. And Danger. the Vikings think they still have a chance. I heard the gun go off. And they're taking the ball away from the players. Was that an ending or was that an ending, Tom? To what the a, season, huh? And Bruni's Nothing to it. First Red, chance huh? is a win. What a perfect record. The Vikings will go to seven and nine. The Eagles will go. Watch this. Now this place is 11 seconds, nine. right? He lets her go. A wing and it's going to be batted around off to the left side of your screen. Geronimo, it's called. Now once you get batted around, there it goes. Gets tipped again. Look at <laughs> Anthony Carter, the man of the hour. And that's when the clock was running out, but not on Fred Bruni. Once again, the look final at, score look. is Minnesota 35, Philadelphia 37. For Dick Vermeil, this is Tom Brookshire saying so long for Minneapolis, Minnesota. Coming up next, it's San Francisco's last chance to make the playoffs as they host the NFC Eastern Division champions, the Dallas Cowboys. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. 37.